Hello, everybody. Oh, welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob. I'm Mel. And we're here, surprise, to play another board game. I bet you didn't see that coming. <laughs> we got gotcha. you. <laughs> they didn't know we were going to play another board game. They never knew. Uh, we're so tricksy. I know. I know. Uh, so, hello, everybody. Uh, we scheduled a stream kind of last minute, like three or four hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we'll give you a little backstory, kind of funny. Uh, and and those maybe I don't think Yogi's here yet, but he was he was asking yesterday. I saw I saw he was asking in the chat when I mentioned the comment that Ark Nova we played yesterday live, and I ordered that like in January of 2022. Like what is that? Six months ago? Seven months ago now? I don't even know how long it's been. Uh, we ordered a copy of Ark Nova, and we're like people are saying you got to play it's the hottest thing. Blah blah blah. And I said okay, I'll check it out. All right, just like Terraforming Mars, I had no. Uh, desire to play a game wingspan at, at first based on the looks of it passed up that at a convention even scythe first time i saw scythe at a convention just throwing out random games uh even though some of those are similar but just for example i saw those games all the first time at conventions and i went <laughs> mm -hmm. i saw this game sentinels at a convention and the older art of the game just made me go poo poo at my first gen con i saw sentinels and my buddy shamar played it at, at gen con got hooked on it there bought a whole bunch of stuff Kept going back to the booth to earn prizes and stuff. And I was just like, dude, go have your fun. Play that game. I'm going to be checking out other stuff over here. But um, so this game, like, Sentinels of the Multiverse is something that, like, I'll never forget from that first gen con. But when I was mentioning Ark Nova as a game that you guys were asking to play, I said, yeah, 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 we'll throw it on an order. So I ordered it in January. And, of course, to get free shipping from my local game stores, you, you have to spend $150, $200, whatever it ends up being, um, depending on the store. I always throw some extra games on. There's always some games that you guys are mentioning. There's always some games I'm interested in playing. There's always new games coming out, uh, you know, or games coming out soon that I can add on to the order. Um, but obviously how it works is to get the free shipping. If you put a, a game on that's, you know, supposed to come out and it's a pre-order, it holds up the whole order. Unless you decide to say, hey, ship it separate and you pay the extra shipping or, it's, you know, you go there and pick it up or whatever. But this game, it was getting mentioned when I was playing Marvel Champions. It was get, got mentioned before the original version got mentioned before and I played Marvel Legendary on the channel, for example. Anytime we talk about Marvel Champions, not every time, but over the last few years we've been playing Marvel Champions, this damn game kept being brought up. And I went, why would I care about an old ass game called Sentinels and Multiverse that's like old? Like, why would I go back and get into that? Of course, I play lots of older games on the channel. It's just I'm trying to troll you guys and be a jerk, but... Uh, Sentinels of the Multiverse was on that order with Ark Nova. That was one of the games that was delayed. That I like, I ordered it when people are talking about it again. Somebody said there's a definitive edition, Rob. It's a nice little retail box. Go get it. It's a bunch of content in it. You can try out Sentinels, which you were saying was old and busted. They've now fixed some things and came out with a new box. I went, I'm always down with that. If an old game fixes some stuff, refines itself, improves based on feedback, gets with the damn times, packages itself, re-releases itself, you know, and, and, and learns from, you know, the things publishers have been doing wrong over years. I'm all out, out for trying it. I, I don't write the game off. So I threw this on the same order as Ark Nova. It was funny because people are asking for Ark Nova around the same time as this. And I went, yeah, 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 whatever. I don't care to play both of the games, uh, but I'll put them on an order. And if they never come, they never come. Like I knew, I knew Ark Nova is going to be delayed and Canada shipping was ridiculous. Delayed by like four or five months. Um, and I was even on like the second or third wave or something. It is crazy. So that Ark Nova held up this game and it's been sitting there collecting dust in the back of my local game store, waiting with my name on it. For months. For like half a year. Yeah. So we got this pile of games came in on that order, plus other orders that came like literally the same day that we ordered like the week before. So we got like a pile of games. I don't want to talk about all those games. I didn't want to say any of them because I wasn't sure if we we're going to play them on the channel. Some of them, I just don't know if I care to play on the channel or if I can give away or, you know, whatever. I, or, or play later. I just don't care. So this was in that pile. Mel and I today, uh, we're kind of like... Well, last night. It started last night. Okay, last night after Ark Nova, we're like, what are we doing this week? We could be going to Gen Con in like a week and a half. It looks good. We have publishers that want to send us prototypes or games to, you know, for Kickstarters and things. And we're talking about trying to make our plans for the week before Gen Con. And we're figuring out if we're going to do some streams, looking forward to games there. Are we going to play some games before we go? If we're going to play some games before we go... What should we play that will matter for when we're there? And Ark Nova is one of those because you know if you go to Gen Con this year, everyone's going to be talking about Ark Nova. It's a hot game, blah, blah, blah. Publishers are going to be talking about it. 
They're going to be relating things to it. It's going to be on everyone's mind. You know, it, it's a thing, right? And I want to go there having played it. For the knowledge. For the knowledge to kind of, you know, as experience, you know, I, I, I'm kind of, you know, it, I, I, my job is in this industry, right? So I should kind of like, when a game shoots up to the top of the BG list, you know, you should kind of pay attention most of the time. Um, so yeah, Sentinels, I figured I'd try it out. And I always said like, nah, I'm not worried about it because it's uh, Marvel Champions. Uh, oh, I did not center that like I thought I did. Uh, whoops. Uh, Zal Zalkaline, thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, that was actually not bad placement, right? It was cover okay. up the title. I just forgot to move it after I put the box on the thing. I was going to like put it back in the center in front of our faces for Thank fun. Thank you for subscribing to show Rob that he forgot that. Yeah, yeah. Also, just want to say Janet says, yay, Gen Con. We leave on Wednesday. Yay, Janet. That's uh, I ho ho safe travels. Yeah. Safe travels. Uh, I'm excited. Awesome. If we do go, like we should be good. Uh, we should be good. It's like now we're getting closer. I kind of like, you know, or we should be good. We'll see. Um, things can happen. You never know. Um, but yeah, we'll let you know, of course. We'll stay in touch in that little, uh, our private producer going to Gen Con secret channel. Um, we'll, <laughs> we'll keep everyone uh, up to date on what's going on so we can meet up and everything there. Um, or not, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. Um, but yeah, so Sentinels, um, it, it, when, they, when I read about the definitive version, I threw it on the order, and I, th I always thought I was going to just avoid this game because Marvel Champions came out by Fantasy Flight Games 2019. I saw it. Okay, that was a Marvel license on it. It's designed by a bunch of the designers that make my favorite card games, you know, that make Game of Thrones, the LCG, Arkham Horror, uh, uh, Lord of the Rings LCG, you know, they've all worked on, like, all the ones, Warhammer LCG, L5R, like, the whole card game department at Fantasy Flight Games, past and present employees, um, always made good stuff that I always fell in love with, love diving deep into, love collecting, love learning. Um, and yeah, so they, they came out with um, Marvel Champions, if anyone is living under a rock and didn't know, in 2019, we were there at Gen Con, actually. Mm -hmm. It's funny, that's when we learned about it at a press conference for Fantasy Flight Games product line. And uh, yeah, boom, on the screen, I'll never forget. I was sitting like second row or whatever, and I remember the, I had the big screen in front of me, the speaker and everything, it was just like, Boom, Marvel Champions, trailers, whoa, card game, cooperative LCG. And I'm like, oh my God, this thing's going to print money. Yeah, people went crazy. Like it's And it was during the hype of the Marvel movies are still blowing up and all this. And they come out with a cooperative LCG where your Marvel official characters that everyone's obsessed over. Disney bought the company, all this stuff, you know. And, and it's a big deal. That made Sentinels of Multiverse fall way, like not even, I forgot it even existed that far down my priority list. Um... So yeah, I just played Marvel Champions, and, and people still brought up, Rob, you need to play Sentinels. And I'm like, but if I want to feel like a superhero, <laughs> why not play the game I've already spent like hundreds and hundreds of dollars on cards that keep coming out and keep expanding and, and just keep seeming to get better. And eventually we'll have X-Men in it, we hoped. Now we know it will. Uh, so Sentinels showed up, and we're sitting there last night, we're like, what do we play this week? What do we do? What can we learn? What can we play? When can we stream it? We're like, let's open Sentinels and start playing it we didn't play last night we no we ju just read i just opened it and sorted the box yeah started reading the rules my brain was mushed by the time i got halfway through the book um but this morning we woke up read the rules played two games mm -hmm. and we're like we were gonna play all week in the evening between streams kick good with it learn it and then maybe play it before or after gen con just as something to play or if we don't go to gen con something to play well we're not at gen con you know and uh yeah we just played it today a couple times and we're like it is a little fiddly, it is a little weird. The rule book sucks. Um, it does feel like a very dated game, but it's simple, it's not too bad. We will stumble playing it today, I'm sure, because we only played it a couple times. We literally played, like, started playing it. Today. Uh, like, eight hours ago. Um, and then I said, okay, I'll make some thumbnails, we'll, we'll, we'll schedule a stream, let's do it tomorrow. And then we're sitting there, we're like, you know what, let's just play tonight, let's just play. So, here we are. This surprise. Is a, yeah, surprise. So, um... <laughs> I'm giving it a chance. We're playing it. Mm -hmm. I bought it. We're trying it out. So full disclosure, we bought this, you know, uh, with our funds. This was not sent to us by a publisher. Thank you, of course, to those who support the channel, allowing me to do this full time, allowing us to, you know, place board game orders more often than we would and buy games that we might be tr interested in or you guys are interested in or we should try. So this one falls in that category of we're just trying it. This wasn't one I was hunting out. I really wanted to play that bad. This is basically... Because you annoying trolls in the chat. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, from those who, like, just mentioned it. And I've always wanted to try it, especially since my buddy, uh, Shamar, 
who's been on the channel before, he he really liked it at the first Gen Con we went to and said it was a great game. And we just, ne I never sat down to play with him and I always meant to. And then just a new LCG would come out. We'd play that together, another board game. And we just, I forgot to ever go back and play this. And then they rebooted it to a definitive edition. Uh, they just forgot to make a good rule book and tutorial for it. It seems very lazy repackaging, in my opinion, but um, the game seems okay. We'll play it today. But I understand all my complaints and, and, and things I like about it. It's only, we only started playing it today. And we've only played a couple times. We're just having fun trying it out. We're it, just trying it out. Sorry. Is it going to be hard for you to, to, I guess, what is the word? Is it going to be hard for you to play this and forget about Marvel Champions? Like to play it as a, its own game and forget? Yeah. Not necessarily the rules, but just like you enjoy Marvel Champions a lot. And I don't want you to compare this to that. Well, you've already heard me bitching while we were no, playing I know, today I know, I know. off stream. I know. Complaining but about me, aspects of the game. For me, I'm looking at it as its <laughs> own game. And I don't know, are you going to do that as well? I, I'm going to try. Okay. Because that's, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> so forgetting about Marvel Champions. And like, then like you can tell, this. they're obviously influenced. As DC's influenced and Marvel's influenced, they steal each other's ideas and their heroes. This game is obviously like... Taking the, you know, the tropes, we got, you know, the Batman type characters and the Iron Man type characters and the Flash type characters and all that kind of stuff. Superman or Captain America, it's all, it's all in here. It's all in here. They just didn't want to pay Marvel or DC. Um, it's obvious. Can I ask a really silly question because yeah, yeah. I'm not really into the comics? Are these real characters in comics? Okay, I, th I think the game company, based on just reading the rule book, I think they made their own comic world out of this. Oh, okay. And they have, like, I think a podcast, a website. I don't know if they have real paper comics, but they made backstories for all these characters and okay. villains and scenarios. They have their own little world they've kind of built up. That I got some of that from the lore, but I wasn't sure if this is these are actual characters uh, that exist I in don't some know. universe somewhere. I'm assuming they made some comics, maybe. Uh, but I, I don't care and I don't know. But Someone uh, in the chat will tell us. Yeah. Okay. It, it's based on a fictional comics company. Oh, okay, okay. okay. I Thank thought you. so. Thank I you. thought that originally, but I wasn't sure if over time... They like actually made real comics and started getting crazy with it before they made the definitive edition. Okay, that's awesome. Oh, Thank you so much, Oh, there are no Sean. real comics. Thank you, Sean. I just wasn't I, yeah, sure. I didn't know either. I was like, I didn't think there was back in the day, but who knows over time, right? The game mm -hmm. maybe got popular, and I know they made a digital version for the old one. Um, and I know they released a ton of expansions over the years. I remember going to Gen Cons and seeing them promoting next expansions and things like that. Um, Uh, Bob, no, you can't get in our super secret going to Gen Con channel. I only want people in there who are going to be physically at the con mm -hmm. so we can talk about more things that are relative to where we are and just updating each other and that kind of stuff. It's just a lot of, you know, it should be a mostly chat that only matters to people who are at the convention, like where to meet up and let's go out for dinner and stuff like that. Like, I, I don't want it to, you know, we'll post updates in the Discord about yeah, what's going on. And all that yeah, stuff, yeah, for sure, for sure. That'll I, be separate. I, I just need a private place for like the handful of our producers scrolling by there that are actually going to be at the con. So if we do want to meet up or if they see something cool on the floor, they can tell us, we can get there, or vice versa. We can say, like, holy crap, I think we found the best game you guys need to all check out, go to this booth, you know, or we need another person to help us demo this, anyone in the area, that kind of stuff like that. Like, it's, you know, relative to the con. Mm -hmm. And I want people to be able to flood that little chat and, and you know, and it's not flooding another channel or, you know, to people who just don't care, who aren't in the area, not even in the country, don't even care about Gen Con, that kind of stuff. So uh, that's all. That's all. But yeah, that's all. The figures game comes with many comics to lead into the scenarios. Yeah, I didn't even know about the figures game related to this that um, uh, Mike, I think, was mentioning in the in the Discord. I had no idea. Hmm. I'm, I'm still just trying to try out the card game and see if uh, it's any good. But hmm. uh, yeah. All right, for those that don't know, uh, let's go, let's talk about Sentinels, the Multiverse. But I just want to give that, like, full disclosure. We bought the game and, like, to understand we've only played today and understand... This isn't something we seeked out. I, I didn't really want this game, to be honest. I, I have Marvel Champions. That's. I'll give you more of my thoughts of this game at the end of the stream, like where we're at, initial impressions, what I think. But uh, yeah, that's all. I think we'll play more of it on the channel, I think. We'll see how this video or stream does, if people care to watch it and they enjoy it, if there's still an interest in this game. 
because uh, I know a lot of people are mad at this publisher for basically they had like a Kickstarter campaign. I remember hearing about this. They launched like a Kickstarter campaign for some all in, I don't know if it was a storage solution or an all in package for Sentinel's first edition and all of the expansions and stuff. And people bought into it and literally like, I think it was, I don't know how long, I don't remember. This is like last year or something. Um, it was during COVID, I'm pretty sure that people got pissed that they all of a sudden announced we're doing a definitive edition, not compatible with the old edition. We're starting over. Oh. And uh, yeah, all these people spent thousands or hundreds of dollars on the old stuff, collecting it, thinking, you know, it was going to be supported. They didn't make it clear that it was like, this is the end of it or something like that. I could be wrong. That's just what I heard. Uh, I, met, I read this like it was a year or two ago, I think. Um, but a lot of people got pissed that they like bought in on the old edition and they kind of were like, oh, by the way, <laughs> we've been working on a revised edition oh, and no. dumped the old one even during that time while you were buying and we were telling you to get this stuff on Kickstarter or whatever. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong if that's how it worked, but. Oh, Sean says no, they were very clear that the storage thing was the end. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, 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 good. I, I was hoping somebody would know a little more details, because that's just the impression that somebody told me. So, I, I mean, that's how they felt. Me, I, I don't care either way, because I didn't buy into any of it. So when I hear they make a new edition and I'm getting it now, I feel like, yes. Yeah, we got the better Perfect one, right? time to join in. Exactly. <laughs> Suckers. Um, but yeah. Janet, yes, I was off today. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I realize we are... Is it me? I don't know, maybe. No, I'm just not in. Or, yeah, you're a little... Get away from me. Get over <laughs> on your side. We're not centered. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, let's talk about this game. Uh, yeah, so this is Sentinels of Multiverse. As you see, uh, Definitive Edition. So this re-implements Sentinels of Multiverse. I don't know what the changes were. You can look those up online. To me, don't care. I don't care. If you're getting into this game now, this is what you get. This is where you start. They had a Kickstarter for expansion. I think that expansion being on Kickstarter is why people were talking about it in our chat saying I should look into it because they're like coming out with more stuff. And it's like, okay, but that still doesn't change the fact that I'm in the middle of playing Marvel Champions having a great time yeah. uh, and looking forward to future product for that game. Like, do I need two games that are similar? No, 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 I don't. Which is the reason why, like, when I went back and tried Marvel Legendary again after Marvel Champions came out, people kept saying, like, why would I need Marvel Champions over Marvel Legendary? And when I have it, I'll go play it. I played it and was like, yeah, this is not even close. Like, Marvel Champions is just... Mwah. Like, the whole multi-use cards is like, that's all it needs to crush these fools. Not to mention True Solo. Oh. True Solo. Yeah, this is one to five. I, I was going to say but... that till the end. But we have to talk about it. You're going to see yeah, in a gonna second. You're going to hear me complaining right from the beginning. I forgot, and I remember somebody mentioned that to me. And when we pulled this out last night, we started reading the rule book, and I went, no. And it has a section in there explaining, you can't play with less than three heroes. The game has been balanced for three to five players. So get this, get this. Ready? Get this. I'm not joking. But this game that released in 2022 at retail, a definitive edition, a second edition, if you will, a best of, okay, didn't include a true solo mode. And this is after pandemic stuff. This is after the rise in solo gaming, the cooperative gaming at, at solo and low, lower than even two player gaming. Like two player gaming has been hotter than solo gaming for longer. And Marvel Champions is out there, like, draining people's bank accounts in the solo gaming community. This game thought, you know what? Let's repackage it, and let's not balance it for true solo. Let's just, let's just keep it at three to five players. Do you think anyone will care? Mm -hmm. Do you think we'll lose any money doing that? Do you think we'll piss off Rob on Rob's gaming? No, they didn't care about that. But, uh, yeah, like, what were they doing? What was wrong? I, I don't know. Anyways, I was going to save out till the end, but... We got to show it, like, why are we playing two heroes each? And even in the rulebook, it recommends. If you're playing two people, run two heroes each. Not even some share the character. They say the best way to play two player at the table with our, our cooperative superhero game in the day of Marvel Champions and other games. I don't know if Heroes of Need or Hour of Need or whatever it's called. I don't know what they did with that one, but I know those guys love Marvel Champions, so they probably were smart when they did it. Um, but this one, yeah, you need three people at the table to play it properly how it's designed, 
Um, and if you're playing solo, you have to run three heroes. And that means like three decks, three hands, shuffling, drawing, balancing abilities, all that for three heroes. I know there's people that do that and love that, and that's fine. But like, is it that hard to just scale your villain's health and your damage effects? They already do it in the game. They have this H symbol that scales by the amount of heroes playing at the table. I just don't understand why they couldn't go below three or spend the time designing or redesigning or playtesting to try to get it to true solo. Like, <laughs> holy crap. Anyways, uh, yeah, so when I read that last night, I was like, I don't even, I want to throw this game in the garbage. Well, but mainly because we don't usually play more but than like, one But like, this is a re-released, brand new, We guys, we took the best of, we brought you a new version. This is a reason to get away from the old version, buy our new stuff. We're coming back to the market. We have to compete against Marvel Champions. We have to compete against, I don't know, what other cooperative and solo games are out there and stuff. And this is what we brought you guys. Three player minimum in 2022 or 2021, whenever this came out. So anyways. <laughs> uh, Sean saying, okay, honest question. Is this going to be you just complaining that it isn't a different game? Uh, uh, no, I'm going to play it, but I have to be honest uh, and I have to give my thoughts because there's a whole bunch of people in here saying I'm interested in this game, but I want to hear what Rob thinks or what he wants to do. So Sean, uh, if you don't want to hear honesty, thanks. If you're just a fanboy for this game and you're looking for another channel to just tell you how great it is, go watch another channel that, that will probably tell you how great it is and play it one time and leave. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how I feel about that. But uh, it, it's a serious thing, though. True Solo needs to be in a game that's competing with Marvel Champions. Like, you can't pretend that one doesn't exist. The only reason I know about this game uh, lately, it, the Definitive Edition, is because people are coming in my Marvel Champions streams mentioning it. So, yeah, you kind of kind of have to... You can't talk about one without the other here in 2022. So, anyways, it is designed by Christopher Battle and Adam Rebotero. I don't know if they were the original designers of the original one. Uh, but I'm curious. Oh, Paul Bender is not part of the team anymore or whatever. But I was just curious, like, what changed? Like, maybe it was new designers and they decided they... Or it's the same designers and they just didn't want to redesign it to work at the lower player count. But I still, I'm just shocked. I, like, it just blew my mind. And I honestly didn't want to play it. But I played it today and I tried it. So we're streaming it. So I definitely liked it enough that we're going to play it on the channel. But, uh, Yeah. But if you have three players, I can see this being awesome. Like fun, definitely fun. If you got four or five players, amazing. But again, so is Marvel Champions at, at three and four players, which I've played. Uh, that's a blast. Uh, and it only seems to get better over time. All right. But let me show you this, actually. Let me show you this. Uh, oh, the weight's at 3.00, but let me show you this. I will give it one thing for sure, okay? I will give it this for sure. This is the Definitive Edition core set, okay? It comes with, uh, what is it, six villains? One, two, three, four, five. Plus we have one on the table. Uh, well, I think it's the six because I'm just counting the dividers. Oh, okay. So, so comparing to the Marvel Champions core set, if you're looking for a contained game, you know, if you don't want to buy expansions for this, or if you don't want to buy expansions for Marvel Champions, I usually recommend, like, the LCGs, just buy the core set, try it out. There's three scenarios. But, you know, like five heroes or whatever, you know, or four different factions sometimes in the in the LCG cooperative core sets. And you usually can shuffle them up and mix them around and, and have some, some fun with it and decide if it's for you or not before you start going crazy with expansions. So you, you can try and if you don't like it, you can usually sell it and somebody will buy your core set to try the game out themselves and see if they want to get into it. So this game's kind of doing the same thing. There are expansions coming out, you know, just like they did with the old version, they're going to plan a whole bunch of expansions. But this revised core set, our definitive edition, whatever you want to call it, uh, comparing that to Marvel Champions, again, I haven't played everything in here. Like I said, we've only played two villains and five or six different of the heroes. But there is 12, is it 12 heroes? I need uh, to know exactly. I think so. I think it says it in here. Uh, so in here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 11, 12. Yeah. yeah, 12 heroes, okay? Compared to Marvel Champions 5, that you get in the core set, I believe, right? 5? I cannot remember. Black Panther, Spider-Man, 
uh, She-Hulk, Captain Marvel, who am I missing? Iron Man. Five, okay? You only get three scenarios in that one. And you're going to say, what about the modular sets you can switch around? Oh, that has that too. And they have one, two, three, four, five, I think six. I think it's listed in here. Sorry, it's in here sec. too. They have environments that work kind of like the modular sets that are kind of like... Six, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, six. Yeah, okay, let's see, see. Yeah, so think about the math on that. If you have six villains, 12 heroes, and hero variants, there's hero variants, by the way, 12 here, let's just say base to base, right? 12 heroes, six villains, and six environments, okay? And I kind of equate that to like modular sets, right? Like it, it changes up the scenario a bit, but the villain's still doing like the same stuff. Um, and but this can mess with the heroes and the villains, which is neat. You get a lot more in this box uh, for replayability if you're just looking from like a board gamer perspective and you just want something contained that you can pull out every now and then with your friends and shuffle up and, and make it feel different every time you play. There's no deck building in this that I know of because all, all the characters have pre-built decks. So, so it's more similar. It reminds me of uh, Street Masters core set where it comes with, you know, the scenarios and then the bad guys and the, or the mobs or whatever they're called um, and the factions. And then it comes with like your hero deck, which is like the same, but then you can tweak it or whatever. It's, this is more similar to uh, Street Masters than it is kind of Marvel Champion set. But I just want to show that if you're looking for a superhero game, uh, the fact that how much content comes in here kind of was surprising. So mm -hmm. you'll get more, I feel, for your money if you're just looking for a superhero game that you don't want to expand, which I know there's an audience for that. I do that with collectible card games where I just buy a bunch of starter decks, pull it out, play it casually, and then put it away and have it as its own contained game. I know there's a small group of people out there that do that. So when you compare this to what you get in Marvel Champions Core set, it's like night and day kind of. So I, I, that definitely has a lot going for it here. Okay, so I can't just rip on the bad and, and not talk about the good. I'll take that. Um, so yeah. And it even comes with a token box that you're supposed to dump all the yeah, tokens in. Uh, but I just put them all in baggies. They're all on the side in trays. Um, but anyone who's wondering what this super cool box is, this is just to throw all your tokens in. So you can just open it up and grab your tokens out of here in a big messy pile. <laughs> but uh, it still works. It still works. Yeah, uh, I like them better in baggies. And then there is also, uh, which we're not showing off today, there is like these events. Uh, is this how they are? Yeah, there's like these events, critical events and standard events that you can combine uh, scenarios together in like a campaign and earn what's called collections or whatever um, and have like alternate versions of the scenarios or villains or something. I don't know much about it. I did read about it in the rule book, but it's like we're not there yet. We're not going that far, not I don't yet. think. But um, yeah, you have also alternate villain scenarios and you can play a campaign mode. It doesn't look like too serious of a campaign mode. It's just light, but I mean, like. But in a night, you might be able to get through the whole thing. I don't uh, know. No, I don't. I don't know how many. I don't know how how many how long it is, but. Okay. Um, I don't know either. I'm just. But it talked about putting in a campaign, but you probably can play through each like villain or whatever. Somebody in the chat will know. Yeah. Does anyone know about the campaign mode in this a little more? Um, but it's it comes with campaign mode, which you can't say that for Marvel Champions Core Set. I mean, you can play them together, but you don't get any kind of cards. There's no you need connection. The, you need the campaign boxes for Marvel Champions to start playing campaigns in that game, right? This, yeah. you kind of have an option to do that right from the beginning, uh, which is kind of neat, which is kind of neat. Um, but I just want to show that. I thought it was super neat. The foam doesn't come with it. I just threw that in just for, so the cards don't all fall over while we're playing here. But uh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Anything else you need to say? It's best with four players. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, like it says one to five on the box, but it's best with four players and it's not true solo. So I, I need to be upfront about that, of course. Yeah, because people are saying, I don't mind playing two handed, but three. Yeah, yeah you have to play three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you can house rule. I'm sure you can modify some values on, your, on yourself, but like. Again, why do that when there's like a thousand games that come out every 30 seconds and some of them will do it better and, you know, kind of, you know, look after the solo community too, right? But anyways, so just keep that in mind. I, 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 and you know me, I don't like playing two-handed if I don't have to. Yeah. 
If we don't have to, we don't like. Like, I get mad at Mansion of Madness because <laughs> it, it's so not balanced at true he, two heroes, and when you play solo, you have to play two, and it feels so tough and not balanced and, and a mess. Like, they didn't play test it properly. But then when you throw a third hero in the mix, all of a sudden it's like, oh, oh, the game seems like it's working now, and it's all balanced. So there's other games out there that do that. It's just, like, older games usually do that. And a definitive edition, I expected more. All right. Yes. Yeah, Any, anyone who's new here and you're a Sentinels fan, like, please understand, mm -hmm. like, some of my favorite games are in the top, like, three games on my favorite list of all time. I'll still in those streams with the designers hanging out in chat, complain about the things that could be better in the game. I always want things to be better. And constructive feedback is a thing. And, you know, as a consumer, I'm just like you guys, I just buy my games, so... I can't sit here like other channels and be positive and not be myself all the time and lie and be fake and tell you this is the greatest game ever, you should play it, and literally two months later it doesn't make my list, even though I just told you it was the greatest game ever in my Kickstarter preview of a game. Like, I don't do that stuff. I don't do that stuff. So it's a different channel here. Different channel here. Just need to be clear about that. Just need to be clear about that. I like to be upfront. And if they made a true solo mode, it's not going to make the game worse. It's going to make more people play the game mm -hmm. and it'll make the company more money and it'll make them make more content. So you'll have more stuff to play for your Sentinels collection. So you should want that too. We want our hobby to grow. We want our player base to grow. We want our games to sell to more players so that we have more players to play with and talk about our game with. I mean, most people do. Some people just like gatekeeping and playing with their own game in their basement and does, don't care if anyone else plays it. But that's when your game stops getting content. That's when your game nobody cares about. That's when you just run out of stuff to play. So, <laughs> Edward says, no game is perfect after all, and that's what expansions are for. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they do take what people say, and they try to put that into an expansion, which is helpful. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So just understand, when I'm, I'm not like trashing on a game, it's just like, I need to point out the things that like are just, yeah. Like, if a game is really crap and I'm not having it, I just won't play it on the channel usually, like, unless it's for fun, like during a 15k subscriber stream or something, you know? <laughs> Keith says, Marvel Champions exploded during the pandemic due to having a great soul mode. Yep. yep. So did Lord of the Rings, so did Arkham Horror LCG. All the sales for those games went up uh, from people I talked to. Uh, all, all did very well. All did very well. They're breaking into, you know, people's homes that didn't even know modern board gaming exists because, you know, websites out there, lifestyle websites, tech websites and stuff are posting what to do while you're locked inside during COVID. And those games were hitting those articles and those lists, which made people go, what? There's other games that aren't Monopoly? What? So yeah, of course they blew up. That was a perfect time for that stuff. Yeah, definitely. Like Sajat saying, it's okay to have flaws. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Nothing's perfect, I don't think, in, in gaming. Uh, there's no perfect game, I don't think. But there might be a perfect game for somebody. Yeah. But again. Yeah. Anyways. So let's play some Sentinels. All right. So how the game works, if you don't know, I'm going to explain it. And then Mike James or others in the chat who've played this game are going to correct me anytime <laughs> I explain something not correctly. Because again, I, I'm not even counting what I read last night because none of it was, my head was mushed by the time I was sitting down to read this rule book. Um, but this morning, woke up fresh, grabbed a coffee, read it outside, you know, I was like, okay, let's try it, let's play it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like, I mean, if I didn't play Marvel Champions or cooperative LCGs from Fantasy Flight Games, this game would be a little more confusing than it, it could be, but there is some weird fiddly things. I haven't printed out the 300 page FAQ or anything that exists for the game if there is one. Um, I know over the years, I'm sure there's like, I've played enough of these card games that go on for years. There's like always huge databases of card corrections and erratas and, and stuff like that. I haven't looked into any of that stuff. We're just going based on what's in the rules. And there were some cards we had questions about, but mm -hmm. I don't know if they'll show up today. We'll see. But uh, I appreciate the help, everybody. If you have anything, you point anything out we're doing wrong, 
Um, cause again, this is not one of those ones where like, I'm bringing this game after I played it for like a few weeks or months and I'm like, let me show you. This game is one of my favorites. This is one like, this is different. This is a different stream. We're doing that. Okay. Uh, so you basically grab your villain and your villain comes with a character card. And this is on the wrong side. We need it on this side because each villain oh, has sorry, a setup it. side. No, sorry. this side had the cooler art. It makes yeah. sense why you want to play with that one. Um, but this <laughs> is the side of Akash Buta. The reason we're playing Akash Buta, Buta uh, is because they have this awesome little lore book that comes in the game. And this lore book explains a little bit of lore about each of the heroes and the villains and the places and scenarios and whatever, but also has a cool little gameplay write up. So this. Shouldn't say lore. This should say, Rob, this is not a lore book you just throw in the garbage or the recycle or put on the bottom of the box and never look at because you don't really care about the lore of this game. This should say lore and important gameplay information to figure out which hero you might like to play and which scenarios are harder and all that stuff. So there is gameplay stuff in here that I recommend reading if you're going to play this game and it's super helpful. Yeah, it was very helpful. Super helpful. So uh, in here, you have the heroes ranked by complexity, okay, which is not really lore, but it's in here. This should be in the rule book, I wish. Right at the beginning, like kind of like a learn to play to get you started, right? Uh, it does talk about a setup scenario. We're not playing the starter scenario. There is a learn to play scenario, which is very nice. It's kind of like the same way that uh, Aeon's End comes with a pre-built deck. Oh, or, yeah. And, or, you know, and they give you your heroes, just play with this. Don't shuffle the Nemesis deck and just play your first game. And they'll kind of show you a bunch about the game and, and kind of make it easy. It has that in this game. We're not playing that on stream. I'm sure people have probably played that out there. Pretty sure. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, though. Um, but anyways, I'm sure you can find videos of people playing that or the company playing it probably in a tutorial video or something. I think it does it in all the legacy ones we've done. It starts that way. Yeah, true. So I think we have. I know it does yeah. do that in Aeon's End, though. But in this game. Oh, in this game, sorry. In this game, they came with a pre-built deck, Baron Blade, that was all sealed separate that you can, like, play as your first game to kind of learn, which was neat. But we decided we're going here and we're like, let's check. Uh, which heroes should we play? And we pick some ones that are like kind of lower, and then we kind of change, and we pick some different ones. But the scenario, uh, right here, the villain. So Baron Blade is like the difficulty one learning scenario. Okay, cool. But we played that one, and it was easy, and it was short, and, you know, not as interesting. Um, but it, it taught you the game, and like kind of gave you a taste of what the, the villains can kind of do to you. We're playing this one just because it's the next number. So it goes one. Uh, for some reason, there's no two, three, uh, but there's four. And then you go up from there in this edition. I'm sure there'll be expansion ones that are like in the difficulty that are in between and stuff like that. Uh, so we picked that. And then for the environment, we just did this. We went in here. So I don't know if this is a good combination at all. I don't know if these heroes are good for this villain or any of that. We didn't go that far. Um, but in here is your side scenarios, your environments or whatever. Uh, so you got one, two. So we just picked Freedom Tower. We already played Megalopolis, which was at, uh, what you're supposed to play with, I guess, in the tutorial, I think. Because um, it was like the first one on the list and it was in the package too, I think. Yeah. Um, but then we're just doing Freedom Tower. We're just trying out Freedom Tower with this one. So Alec, I don't know, obviously it's gonna be easier with that. And this, I don't know if this is difficulty. It's called Peril, which just means that like, you know, mostly it's peril to heroes, but it could also be peril and dangerous to like the villain and stuff, right? So this just means it'll be less trolly to both sides, I think. And then if you play on eight, it's like bad things are happening all, all over the, the place to everybody. <laughs> like it's just like chaos, I don't know. Um, but that's a neat aspect to it. And it's cool that they have these tables in here. So hopefully that helps um, figure it out. But yeah, there's like whole gameplay write-ups uh, and back, or sorry, backstory and gameplay write-ups on each like villain and oh, environment. I didn't, read that far. I didn't read the environment ones. I just thought let's play them and see what, how they work. But for example, the hero Ra here, you can read all about Ra's backstory and you can read how Ra works. So I, I was doing this this morning, was like reading through and kind of like trying to find heroes I might be interested in. But then I was like, you know what, let's just work on the lower complexity ones and try some of those out. And then some of them we liked, some of them we moved on from, whatever. But um, yeah, that's just how we want to do it. So if you want to know why we got our heroes the way we are, we're just in the progress of discovery and learning and, and experiencing the content in the definitive edition so there was no like real rhyme or reason to this stuff we just moved that's what we did is moved on to the next numbers um all right so this hero is uh, like i said a uh, four uh difficulty chaos bound creator has a villain trait 200 health okay it comes with this giant dial 
200 health. Which is crazy after you play the, the boss that is included. How, how much did the tutorial boss have to start you off, Mel? What, I, what did we set this dial to to start playing? Do you I remember? I remember what it was started, but it I remember when we 40. flipped. Oh, when we flipped, it was 30. Oh, or was it only 30? It was maybe, 30 when we flipped. I don't know what it was no, when we started. Was, I forget. Maybe it was 30. Maybe it was only 30. You're but right. when he pulled this out and was like, this boss has 200, <laughs> I like, my head almost spun around in a circle. So here, here's the tutorial boss, and you see he's got 40s. <laughs> and then he flips over and, oh, spoilers. Yeah, he gets 30 more. So he's like a 70, right? <laughs> yeah, but even so. Um, I was like, 200? Yeah, 200. I was like, this dial goes <laughs> above like 100? What? And it does. It does. It's crazy. It does. It's a big, big, big one. <laughs> cool dial, though. Uh, it just gets kind of stuck sometimes. Sticky, but but uh, we've been working on it, trying to wear it down so it doesn't get stuck. But uh, it's like the two wheels were touching for a while. So we've kind of like rubbed them until they're kind of broken apart. But they're a little tight. But anyways, that's besides the point. That's temporary, temporary issue. Uh, so basically this is saying when the environment deck so whatever environment you're playing with this is our environment deck you grab one of these you shuffle it up in here are cards that are going to come out and just mess with you think of these as like side schemes from marvel champions or i don't know plot cards from game of thrones of card games they're just like little sideways cards that come out and say we're going to mess with the rules we're going to change things up we're going to hurt the heroes or we're going to hurt the villain or we're going to buff something up or we're going to troll you you know and kind of you know make the game interesting basically uh, and maybe get frustrate you a little bit, mm -hmm. but that's that's what they do. So what this villain does, this villain says when the environment trash is shuffled into the environment deck. So basically, once you cycle once through that environment deck I just showed you, she regains four HP because we're playing with four heroes. That's what the H is, and then flips the card over. Okay, which we'll deal with later. Hopefully, it never happens, but it could. Hopefully. I think it probably will. <laughs> uh, and then it says after any non-hero target, so that's an environment card or a hero or a villain target, uh, which basically just means cards from those decks, uh, is played, discard the top card of the environment deck. So she's trying to rip through this deck really fast so she can flip and heal. When she flips, she gets angry and starts spraying damage everywhere. Uh, and then during the end phase, which I'll explain the phases in a minute, she tries to pull out a primeval limb card. Okay, and then there's advanced rules to make them even harder, which again reminds me of Aeon's End. Having a little advanced rules right on the card. If you just want to play on a harder mode, just read more on the card and do that. Um, so for setup, we're going to discover four minus one. So because we're playing four heroes, minus one primeval limb cards, which is like her thing. So she gets these little, where are they? These little primeval limb cards that basically she can hurt herself if you destroy them, but they basically just do lots of damage and they're very annoying. And they're going to keep just coming into play. They're really annoying. Yeah, they're really, really annoying. But that's why she has 200 health, I think, is because while we destroy these, that also hurts her. Not to mention us attacking her. So I knew there was something to it. Because when I saw the 200, I was like, uh, do we go too far on the difficulty scale? <laughs> yeah, that like, one to four jump was huge. Because I wasn't doing no 200 damage in that first game. Uh, I don't think that's how it's supposed to work. Um, but anyways... Oh, Mike says, heads up, Rob. Lots of things can cause environment to be reshuffled. Oh, oh, I have not seen that yet. That's interesting. Uh-oh. <laughs> I know she, not to mention that discard effect, but I think there was other ways we saw before. We, were, we played her once this afternoon to try her out, uh, and we did see like she has ways, lots of ways of discarding the stuff off the top of the deck, uh, off this deck to speed it up. So we got to remember that. Anytime a non-hero target is played... So a target, what that means is just anything with a health value on it that can be targeted by damage. Okay, so I'll shuffle this up. And sorry, she needs three Dis limb cards. Okay, three. So discover just means reveal cards from the deck till you find what you need, put it into play, and then shuffle the rest back into the deck. So we got a limb. We got a not a limb. Not a limb. A limb. And a limb. Okay. And then we'll shuffle those back in. Billy says, I really like Unity in this game and her pets. I, I looked yeah. at it. We haven't got there yet, but yeah, Mel was looking at we it. She was interested. We only play so many. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we could only play so many games so far. I know. But we, I do want to try everything in the box. I do want to get there. Um, yeah. Because there's another one that kind of reminded me of Iron Man, where you kind of want to build up the kit mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. which you might like. Yeah, yeah. Well, some of these heroes have good like good cards in play and kind of build up little combos and get stronger as they go, which I do like a lot in games. 
Um, and again, the three player thing, the three player minimum, is not a problem for us. We do have three people that live in our house that I can force to play games with me. So mm -hmm. um, it's not an issue for me personally. But yeah, we do have Kyle. I, I, who yeah, plays true. Too yeah, yeah. We have other regularly. players that play games. But, I, you know, I just want to be clear because I know there are people out there that oh, they come in our chat all the time. A lot of our fans uh, just play games by themselves solo. Don't have a game group. Don't have a family member that will even touch games, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, but like, I don't have a problem with it. But it just means I'm not going to stream this game ever solo. Like, I'll never, ever yeah. do that. That'd be a lot. Yeah. But the, the It wouldn't be that much with the chat not, yeah. hanging out and, like, everyone kind of helping out. We're all playing along together, you know, making yeah. decisions together and stuff. But, yeah, it's just I'll never play. <laughs> I'll, I'll, never, I'll never play true solo. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do so whatever you want. see what they say. Uh, so, well, we can look at them. So this, we can explain some of this art. So there's the HP in the top. You put the damage tokens on them and they kind of remove away their health tokens or whatever. Um, so it even says, when this card is destroyed, she deals herself six fixed energy damage. Seemed weird at first. I was like, well, okay, why is damage fixed? And why is it energy? And why is it ice sometimes? And why is it this and that? It only matters when things block certain types of energy and whatever, but energies could have like attributes to them. But fixed just means you can't mess with the number. You can't reduce it. You can't raise it. All that stuff, it'll always be six, so it's fixed. Um, and then the end phase is like a phase where this stuff happens, which will deal with these things as we go across left to right. But that's just kind of how those work, and, and you'll see how the phases work, uh, which I could actually show you the back of the bo uh, book there. So straightforward, straightforward. This game has a whole bunch of keywords. This is only like half of them. Uh, the most important ones, I guess, from this set are here. So they're right on the back of the re rule book. Reference on the back. Love it. Way it should be. Uh, turn sequence right here. So the game starts off with a villain turn, does a start phase if they have any start phase abilities, and they're super obvious. Like you see end phase in red right on the card. Same things happen with start phase and play phase. They're super obvious. So just glancing around the table, you're at the villain turn, kind of check their cards for start phase, play a card in the play phase, look for any play phase effects, and then do end phase effects from left to right. I just don't know. One question I have, and I couldn't find it when I was relooking in the rules earlier. The hero or the villain's end phase. When does this happen in the end phase? Because this is not really from left to right. Or is this came into play originally, so this always fires off first? I don't think it matters in this case, but I think this fires off first because this card was in play the longest, probably. And then we go to left to and right? And then we go left to right, I think. Okay, we could play it that way. Or does this happen at the end? Or do we choose when that happens? I don't know. I'm not, that I wasn't we're sure not 100% sure. We were just doing it right away at the beginning. But uh, we'll keep doing it that way unless somebody tells us that's wrong, but um, that's how we were doing it. Uh, what's next? So uh, when the villain goes, they do that stuff, and then the heroes go in clockwise order. So we just go around the table. So we'll go first to Wraith, then we'll go to the indestructible bunker, which are the two heroes I'm controlling on the right side of your screen. Then we go clockwise to Melson behind me, beside me, who's got Tachyon or Tachyon, and then we have Haka mm -hmm. uh, over here, and then we go back to the environment, and that's like the end of a round. And then it starts over with the villain and just goes clockwise around the table and keeps doing that until either the villain is defeated, gone down to zero hit points or whatever, or we're all knocked out. We're down to zero hit points and we're all out. Cool part is when you go down to zero hit points, you're not completely out. Kind of like sword and sorcery. You turn into like a little ghost and you still kind of play. You're defeated. But every time it comes around to your turn, you can't be targeted. You're not really doing much in the game other than just choosing one of these abilities to help your friends. So like you dying or whatever, it like motivates the other players to keep on going and you can kind of help them out in spirit. It is very much like sword and sorcery. Yeah, it reminds me of being a ghost. You have limited yeah. abilities, but you're not, you don't have to leave the table and, and you know, go up for your smoke break or you know, the washroom break now. No, no, stay there. You're still part of the game. Don't worry. You're still kind of hanging on with everyone else and cheering them on. Um, so yeah, so you can pick one of these abilities if you're ever knocked out where you can like have another hero take their play phase out of turn order or you know, destroy an ongoing card that's annoying everybody at the table or help a hero heal. Um, so yeah. Uh, and on the heroes, I should talk about the heroes now, I guess, uh, they have a max hit points, and they have a built-in power. So when we're on the hero turn, you'll do the same thing. If you have any start phase stuff, do the start phase stuff. Then you play a card. If you have any play phase effects, do those. Then you pick a power to fire off by default. This reminds me of Flesh and Blood. You kind of can only do one action. Unless you have cards in play or abilities, you go again in Flesh and Blood, right? You, there's always ways to combo it. Certain factions, or in this case certain heroes, can play more stuff on a turn. Especially if they build up, and some just play more cards like by default. They just do more little attacks and stuff. Again, it reminds me of like Ninja from 
Uh, flesh and blood, they're all about getting go again, doing lots of little attacks. But some heroes just only do that one power on their turn and that's it. And it's on. Maybe it's a stronger power. Yeah. So, so the game by default, you only do one power. One power, super simple. Then you draw a card. If you didn't play a card and you didn't use a power, you can actually draw two cards in the draw phase instead of one. And then you just do any end phase effects, just like we saw in the villain, uh, that you have for your hero. And then you pass on to the next hero. And you just do it in that cycle until all the heroes are done. Then you go on to the environment, do the start, play, and end, and then back to the villain. That's it. Very simple. Ta tachyon? Tachyon Thank you, is how I think I was saying it. Yeah, I think so. Tachyon. I, I thought so, but I don't. But I didn't know if it was right. Um... Also, uh, villain starts, turn, goes first. Villain start, turn, goes first. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, uh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, villain, you're villain saying. goes first. Yes yes yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. That's why I was trying to explain the villain first, and then we go around clockwise, right? And I think we'll go with, Oh, you're saying yeah. this villain thing. I'm not sure. I think yeah, so. Yeah, the end phase. Yeah. The villain goes first. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. Villain's uh, end phase ability to go first. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, perfect. Thank you, uh, Balmy. Thank you so much. Okay. I think, too, this game, as you see it played, it makes a lot of sense. Yes. The other thing, uh, setup is super quick. Like I said, you pick your villain, you shuffle the villain deck. Boom. Do their setup. You grab, you grab an environment, shuffle it up. That's it. You grab how many heroes decks. They all have their stuff on the back. It was super easy to sort out the box and know what they are. We just sleeved up these heroes, and then you just shuffle them. You shuffle your heroes, and then you draw four cards. There's no mulligan in this game. <laughs> no. I'm 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 gonna not go on about that one, but uh, mm -hmm. again, 2022, the game has no mulligan rules. Okay, so if you just draw a bad hand, you draw a bad hand. But again, you're drawing every turn. There are draw effects in the game. You're always playing stuff. There's lots you can do. It, it didn't feel like it was ever too much of an issue. But what I did notice, not having a mulligan, definitely made every game we played, even with the same hero, it would feel different because you just would start with every hand and you got to build up things different. And sometimes your combos would come together. Sometimes they wouldn't. Um, just because of what you started with and how you're drawn through your deck. But there are, there are ways to summon cards from your deck and discard pile. You just go and grab them. There's ways to salvage stuff from your discard pile and pull it back. So if you get like a, if you get an early game card and, and it's, it's really, a, uh, sorry, if you get a late game card that you want to combo with, it's better late game against that villain or with your hero or your party or environment or whatever, you can discard it if you have a discard effect that hits you, like, you know, the villain makes you, all the heroes discard a card. Discard those cards, because some, some heroes have salvaging effects that will let them get, pull a card out of their discard pile, add it to their hand, or put cards into play, or uh, discover, or reveal, and all this kind of stuff to help you get to the tools you need. And some heroes even have cards that help them, like, really set up, dig, draw a whole bunch of cards, dig for stuff, and all this thing. So it's, it's not as bad when it has that stuff. When it has no mulligan. But I just thought it was weird. But again, it's your game. You play how you want. You can add house rules and make mulligan rules all, all you want. But it just was weird. But it does get you into the play really quick. Like yeah, the, the idea of go. Yeah, just pull out all the decks you want to play with, shuffle, and start playing. Um, but again, on Rob's gaming table, we'd never get into anything quick. So you're, you're not going to see that here. <laughs> so that's why I have to explain that this game, you get into it quick. Because we ramble. Uh, so yeah. Well, nobody wants a half an hour stream, right? No, I get in trouble if we stream too quick. There's yeah, people if it's who, too short, people are like, wait. Yep. There's the jokes, like, oh, it's been an hour. They haven't even started playing yet. But then there's the, the stuff when I, like, we stream for like two hours. And people come at the end and like, wait, what? You're already done? This is crap. What the hell? I thought you would be just getting started. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but especially when we play a game first time on the channel, I like to explain the game a little bit so people who don't know about this game can understand it a little bit and can watch and understand. But again, there's probably how to play videos for this game has been out for like so many years. Um, yeah, I don't know when the original one came out, but I remember at Gen Con 2013 it was there. And they were heavily promoting it. 2011. 2011 oh, it came wow. out. So it was out for three years. Two years. It came out in 2011, 2012, 23. Yeah, two years. It was like out for two years when we saw it at that Gen Con and they were promoting the crap out of it. So that's cool. All right. Uh, okay, so we just draw four cards. That's it. Four cards each. I have our decks and discard piles are off screen just so we can fit more on screen and zoom the camera a little bit more. So maybe you can kind of see what's going on better. Uh, okay, so villain first, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Uh, so there's no start phase effects. So we go right to the play phase. It'll play the first card. First card is Earth Sacrifice. 
a one shot. So this means the card just gets played and goes right to the discard pile. You get to destroy heroes minus one ongoing cards. So we're playing four heroes. So we're going to destroy three ongoing cards. A well, hero ongoing cards. So that means cards we control. Well, haha, -ha, we don't have any in play yet because we haven't got a turn to go yet, jerk. You jerk villain. Um, discard as many cards from the top of the environment deck as cards destroyed by this card. So there were none. So we do not have to speed through the another way that this, this jerk can go through the uh, environment deck. I was deck. lucky. Okay, then we do the end phase stuff. Uh, so we know we discover one primeval limb card. So we start ripping through the deck. We found one. So I technically don't need to shuffle, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, this one, this card deals each target in the hero play area with the most cards in play to toxic damage. So there are there no, is no, nobody has, we, we can choose because it's a tie right now. Nobody has the most cards in play. So who do you think? Is good to take he damage. Can, he can take. He's got 34. He can take two. Okay. And then there is a little bit more on that card. It says uh, destroy one ongoing card and one item card that is in play. In that, in that play, play area. area. Sorry, they so you have, have no cards in that play area. It doesn't do anything. No. Okay. On to the next card. Uh, end phase. This card deals each non-villain target. So that would mean a tar if there was a target from this deck in the environment. If there's targets in our hero area. We haven't got that far yet. So it deals uh, each non-villain target to projectile damage. So we are a non-villain target, so our heroes will take two, two projectile each. damage. Go the wrong way on the dial. Uh, I always do that. Yeah, these dials are like backwards, Some of them are backwards. Well, no, they're all the same way. Oh, maybe not. Hold on. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, it's just they go counterclockwise, which seems weird. Yeah. Usually you want to turn it clockwise, right? Yep. Um, so, yeah, sorry. Two. Oh, that's okay. And, yeah, yeah. And then this end phase is this card deals the non-villain target with the highest HP for melee damage. I have 30, 30. I have so 28 I'm dealing over here. Four. One, two. So I'm at 26 over here. And then living rock slide here. This card deals each non-villain target two projectile same, damage. Same as that one. one what the heck? I lost like 10 damage right there, this guy. Holy. We haven't even started. Holy. <laughs> this is not going to last long. I don't Bob. feel good about this one. <laughs> all right, we're going to end the stream. We're going to start all over. All right, right from the top. Yeah, that was pretty bad of a draw, but we'll see what we can do here. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. Hopefully you have heal with this guy. Uh, this guy, I don't think he really has heal for others. This is your first time you're playing this guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> we had a healer before. We had a healer. Uh-oh. Uh, awkward. Yeah, he's not, in the, he's not in the party this time. So we just got to deal more damage. So we okay. take less... So this guy's done, or she's done. I don't know. I, I think I, it's a she. It could be a she, but I mean, it's it's a, it's something. Who knows? It's got like multiple eyes, got claws, tails. It's got one, two, three, four limbs. I, I don't know what's going on. It's something. All right. Uh, okay, we're going to Wraith because we're going clockwise. Um, I think Wraith is going to play for her. She has no start phase stuff, so she's going to do a play phase. And in the play phase, she's going to play Leverage, which is a one-shot. Uh, draw four cards, then collect one card. So I'll put that in my discard pile. I'll draw one, two, three, four cards. And then collecting a card, is I believe it's just go through the deck, search right? Search the deck for the indicated amount uh, of indicated cards and put them in your hand. So I can collect any deck. type of card because it didn't list like an item or a one-shot or something. So I can grab any one card, and again, I'm not a pro, so I don't know what the card is I should really be searching for. I should probably look at my hand first and just see. There are some items I know that are pretty awesome. Okay, I know which one I'm Oh, yes. Get. Yes, sorry, sorry, sorry. We do have, we do have, um, when these guys are all revealed, we have to discard an environment card, right? Oh, yes, yes, when, yes. Uh, sorry, after a non-hero target is played. So one, two, three, four. Thank you, thank you, thank no, you. No, no, no. These ones don't count during a setup. None of the card effects trigger. So it, just is one. What I think. This one, though, for sure, I okay, think. Okay, so just one is being discarded. I'm pretty sure, right? I'm pretty sure. I think in setup, no setup effects trigger. Something like that I remember. Yeah, in the that makes book. sense now that you're saying I'm that. pretty yeah, yeah. sure. Sorry, sorry. Because uh, this does say setup. Like, that's part of setup, revealing these ones. Um, oh, yeah, because it says, yeah, reveal versus played. Yeah, that's right. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, so I'm going to search through. I'm going to grab... And add the plus damage one. I have one that adds like, or I should get one that gets me multiple powers a turn. Utility belt, maybe. Utility belt. Uh, yeah, let's do utility belt. Okay. Um, so 
that's her hand. I'll just put it over here somewhere. Shuffle the deck. Okay, now I can play cards. Uh, play a card at least. Okay, and I think I'll play. Sorry, you did play a card already. Oh, oh I did. I did. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's okay. Oh yeah, that doesn't let me play another card. Oh, yeah. that's fine. Uh, power until the start of my phase. I'll reduce the damage that she takes by one. Go, sir. Yeah, thank you. No problem. So they have these little tokens in here to add, like to reduce damage dealt and plus one damage and all this kind of stuff, which is neat. I like that. They have ones uh, tokens that are like, uh, you know, for when you can't do any damage completely, this target cannot deal any damage. They have ones for when uh, you're immune to all damage, little shield tokens you can put oh, on here. It's nice that, that you can just see them at a glance. Uh, yeah. And then we've been using the damage, but there's like a whole bunch of 10, 5, and 1 little health or damage tokens or whatever, um, which is neat. Okay. Uh, so then uh, that's her power. She draws a card for the draw phase. Oh, that's the other card I was thinking of searching for. Oh, nice. Perfect. Um, and then nothing for end phase for her. Okay. Bunker... See what he's got going on. So, so uh, Wraith reminds me of like a Batman type character. She has ways of doing lots of like uh, minimal damage, um, increasing her projectile damage. She can damage quite a bit to like a single target or spread out damage depending on what weapon she's using. She's like a detective kind of smart, uh, like kind of like a Batman type character. And she's very good at fighting and stuff like that. Um, and she can obviously reduce damage to her and, and use smoke bombs and things to increase damage and stuff. Uh, this indestructible bunker guy, he like builds up these crazy weapon upgrades, gets them into play, these ordinances, then puts face down cards underneath them to like destroy them as ammo basically to shoot and build up effects and fire damage across the board, which is neat. Um, so based on that, I guess I'm going to put, I only have one, I'm going to put mounted AP gun into play, I think which uh, is one of these ordinances, which you can see also the limited keyword is a thing. So you have lots of duplicates in your decks, I think, of most of the cards. And some of these items are limited, which just means you can't play another one with the same title. So they do get leaf play and you can play the other ones and stuff. So not completely dead cards, but uh, this one will come into play. I'll play this. Now I can do the power. Obviously, I'm not going to shoot this gun. I have no bullets under it to fire, but uh, I can either draw a card or put the top card of my deck under one ordinance in play, which I will do that. Okay. And then draw. Got a flank cannon. And then my end phase. I have nothing to do for end phase. On to Tachyon. Okay. I have no start phase abilities. Uh, the first thing that I will do is I will play a one shot, which lets me draw one card and play up to two cards. So now I good. can play two cards. Okay, I think I'm going to actually play... Nice one, Bob. Nice one. I'm going to play this one <laughs> as my first card. This is this is cool. This is ongoing, so it's going to stay in play. Uh, hypersonic Dash. After this card is played, Tachyon deals each non-hero target one sonic damage. Targets dealt damage this way cannot deal damage. So for one round, so I'll deal one damage to each of these. Five... I do love the comic book art in this game, especially the stuff that looks like older comic book art from like the 80s and 70s and 60s and stuff. I, I think that stuff's great. It brings me back to being a kid reading through like all those kind of comics from those days, days and age. So can you put on each one of these guys that they cannot deal damage? At all? At all. How did you do that? With my, I, was, I, I was obviously, <laughs> I was I was obviously reading chat and not caring what you're doing. Uh, each non-hero target, one sonic damage. Targets deal targets. Dealt damage this way cannot deal damage. Oh, it's just for until one the round. start phase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but while we have all these, stuff. while we have all these guys on the board, boom, we locked can't up, locked get up. Rid it's non-hero targets, right? Yep. So that means this guy too. Oh yeah, I didn't remove. I didn't remove one from him. Sorry. So that was only my first card. I can play one more. Oh, everybody, she's bleeding. <sighs> she's bleeding. We're all we're almost there. We're almost there. One ninety nine. Okay, and then I think I think I'm just going to play a reaction card. So this is ongoing and limited. So this will stay in in play, and it's a reaction. So every time I am dealt damage by the villain or the minions in play, 
uh, I can draw one card or play one card. If you play a card this way, destroy it. So it just helps me draw cards because yeah. I want to have lots of cards. So I can play Get lots that of in. cards. See, you don't need a mulligan when you got cards like that. Exactly. It's awesome. Exactly. I'm actually going to do this because that's going to get straight. Okay. Then uh, power. My power is reveal the top card of your deck, draw it or discard it. Uh, this one I will draw. Perfect. And then I do get a draw still. So, so Tachyon has a way of building up her discard pile and does like a big effect of damage based on how many cards are in discard pile and shuffles them back in. Yeah. So that's why all these cards that are letting her draw and discard or discard them instead of play or reveal or whatever, it's sometimes you want to just discard just to fill up your, your discard pile to blow and up. And do big hits. Like to do one of those big hits. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. And I have no end phase, so she's done. So moving here, we have no start phase. Did you do the draw though? I did. Even after that draw? I did, okay. yeah. All right, so give me one quick second here. Yeah, no rush, no rush. You're learning this hero, so. We have some start phase, so. I just want to see if any of the, oh, these are the same, I think. Yeah, I think I'm just actually going to play a one shot. So Hawka deals one target, two melee damage. Is there one that's the worst out of all these? Two There's that everybody. one that keeps hitting the lowest. Uh, or the highest. Those are the worst. Yeah, this one deals like the four melee okay, damage. Okay, so I'll, I'll remove two damage from from them. And then I get to draw two cards. So one, two, and then he ha and then power. Uh, Hawka deals one target, two melee damage. So I'll do two more here. So one, actually, we'll just take away the uh, eleven, nine. I don't even need to get rid of that. Do you have some ones? I need three ones. Here. Yeah, yeah. And then he will draw. There we go. Here probably for now. And then he has no end power, so he's done. So now we go to environment. There is no environments in play. So there's no start of phase. We'll draw one that says entry point ongoing. After this card is played, destroy one room card and plus one damage dealt by villain targets. So there is no room cards. There's no room card. So that sucks. So these guys all get plus one when they attack. I guess she doesn't really attack, right? I guess yeah, she does. She does, yeah. Oh, yeah. Over the rainbow, please. Sorry. It's up, pointing oh, plus pointing one. Up. The minus ones are down, so it's very obvious. Oh, okay. So you look negative one. Okay. And no end phase for environment. Villain phase. No so start no phase. No start phase. Plays a card. Ongoing. Harsh renewal. Start phase. Uh, so that's already passed, but that'll happen later. Destroy the primary live card and play with the lowest HP, preventing any damage. She would deal to herself. Shuffle the villain trash into the villain deck. Oh, oh wow. wow. We never saw this. Then one. discover uh, four minus two primeval limb cards. So she loses one, shuffles it back in, two. and gets two more. Oh, we can't even do anything to get rid of that. That's just going to happen. With the lowest HP. So that means the one you're closest to defeating, she's going to just get basically heal up and get new ones. Holy... So okay. now that we know that, we need to like destroy the ones that are like almost dead, get rid of them. Otherwise, she's going to take that one out of play. Okay. And then end phase. Uh, discover a primeval limb card. Okay. Shuffle these back in. This one gets eight. Uh, it revealed a new non-hero target, so discard the top of the environment deck. Wow. Okay, and then end phase for these guys can't go or can't deal damage, but yep. uh, I guess it could still destroy cards. Yep. Right? Okay, so the uh, target hero with the most cards in play, which would be me, yep. destroy, destroy one, one ongoing, ongoing card. Oh. And one item. Oh, I guess that's fine. This is going to destroy in start phase, anyways. And then oh, I don't have. Oh, no, but then that means all these ones are going to do damage. Is it that one? No, but it's already done. No, 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 no. If it's gone, it's no longer an uh, in-play effect. That's, it's passive, right? So this is only an effect... After it... Or is this... Oh, it says when it deals damage. Oh, targets dealt this way. Sorry, cannot deal damage. Never mind. No, that's okay. So that one's gone. Yeah, yeah that that's is the ongoing. Mind. I thought it was like shutting them all down constantly. And then item. I don't have an item. Okay, so this one's done. Uh, this one just deals damage. That one's done. This one just deals damage. That one's done. And this one just deals damage. So I don't know about those. And then this one says, select the target here with the lowest HP, minus two damage dealt by that target until the villain's start phase. Oh, I think that's Wraith. Wraith is 22. Yeah. So Wraith now does 
Minus two damage. Yeah, so she's going to have a useless oh, turn. Oh, and I guess these guys will have plus, or this guy yep. will have plus when he, he attacks. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I'll just put them over here. You can have these. Okay. All right, back to you. All right, wrist hand here. So I can play a card. Uh, well, I might as well just build up. I can't really do any damage. So I'll play the utility belt. Um, and now this lets me do, you may do one additional power this phase. So this lets me do two powers in the power phase. I only have two. I can either draw two cards or play an item card. Uh, hmm. I'll have the most cards in play and I'll be the one targeted. Uh, I mean, maybe I can... Oh, you know what? Instead of doing that, let me do this instead. I think I'll do this in my play first. I get to draw a card, discover an item, and then play oh, a yeah. card, right? Yep. So I draw a card, discover an item card. Yeah, no. There's one. Oh, I got a utility belt and free and play from that. So these nice. will get shuffled in. Then I may play one card. Okay. So I can't play the utility belt, another one, because it is limited. So that makes sense, right? Right, right. Yeah, I'll put in Razor Ordnance, which is Wraith deals one target three projectile damage. So the two powers I'll do are I can play an item card, and then I'll do this one. So the item card I'll play is uh, plus two projectile damage dealt by the Wraith. So that kind of counters out this negative. Oh, this is also gone. Um, so I'm doing three, four, five and back to three, and I will do it to whoever's the lowest. This one, I guess. Mm -hmm. Sorry, how much are you doing? Uh, three. Two left? Yep. And then, uh, draw and nothing for end phase. Another utility belt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now this guy, mounted AP gun, start phase, is going to put the top card of your deck under this card. Okay, now I can play. Uh, let's play, hmm, yeah, let's play upgrade mode, uh, this one after this card is played, you summon one item card, and I cannot use powers, hmm, should I do that? Kind of like a build-up card, then it allows me to just play a bunch of cards, kind of get more built up, but I don't know. Yeah, I'll try it. So I'll play this. After it's played, uh, I summon one item card. Gatling gun? No. I'm gonna do the cannon one, I think. Well, I think I'm gonna get Omni Cannon. Start building that up. Uh, okay, so summon one item card. I cannot use powers. So then I skip powers, then I go to draw. Okay, draw. And then end phase, I'll get to play up to two cards. So let me play this expendable power bank, which, oh no, never mind, that's play phase. Nope, nope, nope. I don't want to do that yet. I want to do that in the play phase, right? 
guess I'll put in flak cannon. So another little weapon that I can put stuff under. And then I'll do emergency shielding. When this card is destroyed, it gains 2 HP, but it has a reaction. Minus 2 to the damage bunker would be dealt. Then if bunker is still dealt damage, destroy this card. I think you can only do reactions once, yes, once per, per phase. Yes, once per turn. Once or per once per round. Oh, okay, okay. So I'll just do that. This is once, uh, activated once per turn. But I think... Oh, I yeah, think like because it's like the villain turn. turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So even though all these guys would be hitting me with damage, if, I don't only get to do it to one. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, that's it for hit Bunker. On to attack you. Okay, no start uh, Start phase. So let's see. Let's see. I think I'm going to play Pushing the Limits, which is Ongoing Limited. So who, who did all this plus one? That's from this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and this has a play phase. I may play one additional card this phase. I guess I could just... I can do a Sucker Punch, which is a one-shot. Tachyon deals one target, one melee damage. I guess we'll just do this one, because this is the one that's destroying our cards. It's also, we need to remember, she's going to take whichever one is the lowest health out of play and put two new ones into play. Yeah. So, so like you kind of want her to take one out of play that has like like more, more health, health on it yeah. than one. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, so I deal one damage. Yep. Then if the target has two or fewer HP, destroy the target. Boom. And when so you destroy good. this one. Oh. What? Yeah. Okay. She's only preventing that destruction. Yeah. This will still hurt her, right? When this is destroyed, deals herself six fixed energy damage. Yep. It's down to 193. Okay, then power. Reveal the top card of your deck. Draw it or discard it. I will keep that one. That's a good card. Okay. And then draw phase. My draw phase says you may draw one additional card this phase. So draw phase, I draw two. And then end, I don't have any. All right. Here, we have no start. Um... I need to build up his hand because he has a lot of things about discarding cards to give extra damage. Oh, nice. So uh, let's do. Does he have stuff you can put in the board to kind of build him up? Because maybe that's like a later game thing. Well, they're all like I put it in. Then the next turn, I I do it. Oh, okay. So we're going to do a one shot. Haka deals one target two melee damage. We got what do we got here? Eight. One, two, three, four, nine, eight, and nine. Right now it's one of those. But I could actually make it one of these because they do less damage. Because I can do two damage, so I can take it off one of these, making it the lowest. So it'll get removed, keeping... Yeah, whatever you want. Okay, so we'll do two damage here. And then he gets to draw two cards. Draw two cards. And then... uh. Power, Hawka deals one target, two melee damage. There's the other uh, thing that... This one, oh, yeah. Probably. Oh, we probably wanted that one to go, right? So you don't have the minuses? Sure. Yeah, so, sorry, put that back what on. What am I taking me. away? Uh, two. And then now I take from his power here, I take from here. Uh, no, I take from this one, because this one is also bad. Uh, this one is bad. They're all bad. And then if this is tied, we choose. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. And then that was his power, his draw phase, and then that is it for him. Okay. Uh, there's no start phase here, so play. Oh, I don't know. This is... Um... Freedom Security Staff, which is a hero target, counts as a hero target, is immune to damage dealt by hero targets. Start phase, which is... Pass. Pass yeah. uh, one hero may discard two cards. If they do, destroy one environment card. So this is a way to get rid of this annoying card. And then end phase. This card deals the villain target with the highest HP to lightning damage. Okay. So now I think we have to discard, right? Because this is a uh, after a non-hero uh, target. Non any after any non-hero target. That is a hero target. Oh, it is a hero target. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Good. So that doesn't count. Okay. And then end phase, we can do that. 
Uh, this card deals the villain target with the highest HP to lightning damage. Down in 191. Oh man, we're almost there. All right. Uh, any start phase? This one. Start phase. Destroy the primeval limb card and play with the lowest HP, preventing any damage Akash Abuta would deal to herself. So I think we take this one, right? Oh, unless you I thought want you said it. this one you wanted. Yeah, because that's also less damage that she's preventing. So yeah, that one. Okay. This also goes away, goes away at the start of the phase. Okay. Um, then shuffle the trash into the deck. And then you need to discover H minus two primeval limb cards. So two limb cards are going to play, and then this goes to the trash after it's done resolving, which I guess will be its own little pile right here. All right. Oh, there's one. Uh, there's same one. one, just came back. And this is deals the non-villain target with the highest HP for damage. This is... Uh, yeah, this is rough. This is rough. Uh, that's 14. Yeah, we need to just work on, like... Keep working on individual ones, these building ourselves get, up. These will get pluses as well. Uh, okay. Sorry, right there. Okay, end phase. This card deals each non-villain target two projectile damage. So non-villain target two. He takes two. Everyone takes two. Uh, three, right? Oh, three. Yep. One, two, three. That's your guys as well. One, two, three. Oh. This card deals the non-hero target with the highest HP for melee damage. 21. Oh, that's you. So three How much is again. It? Oh, sorry. Five. 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 So an 18. Oh my, oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah, this is crazy. We need to get rid of this card like by doing whatever that is next well, start Well, it's going to go away. This card deals each well. non-villain target three projectile damage. So this is gone. Oh no. And three here. One, yeah, we're messed up on this one. And then... Whoopsie. Okay. That was these ones. Then this one. Uh, whoever's the lowest. 17, 18, 16. 15. Oh, yep. He'll do two less damage. Okay. And then this last one. Uh, it's the highest HP. Six melee or five melee damage. I have 16. So it's this guy. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Just I want to stop. I don't think we played a card. Because we did the start phase and then I don't. Oh, yeah. You're right. Sorry. Sorry. We did that, and then I think in my head I thought we were playing cards because I was putting damage and stuff out, but I don't think we played a card. We also didn't discard from playing those two new targets, discard two, two cards, cards off that. Here. Yeah, sorry. And we didn't play we a didn't card. We didn't play a card. Which would be another limb, which is minus which one damage one to this one. And this one is, this card deals the non-villain target with the lowest HP to melee damage. It's actually three, right? Because of... Mm -hmm. These. Oh my god. So that would have just killed, um, that would have just killed, because that would have already been in play, it would have just killed our um, non-hero here, so that doesn't do anything to us. So sorry, this should be... Uh, no, still same place. Oh, same place? Yeah. But they go from left to right, so... That guy was gone already when it got to this card, right? Oh, you're doing the end phase. I thought you were doing the text that it said there. I nope. apologize. Uh -oh. End phase. So, so I was just going no. along the row, right? So I just need to go back to this one, because that's where I stopped to realize that. Okay. So I have to take... Five. Five. Yep. Four. And then now the lowest, the lowest non-villain target takes three. That's me. Thirteen. So I take three. Wow. One, two, three. I'm at ten. This is crazy. This is gonna be a short game, I think. I'm at ten. That's cool. Holy. Do I have an ongoing? Get rid of that ongoing. All right. Uh, Wraith. No, I don't. Yeah, we just need to get some of these gone because it's like we're and this like how is this okay. still there? Because we can't get rid of it. I don't have an ongoing yet. After this card is played, destroy one room card. Plus one damage dealt by villain targets. Yeah, we have to get one of those. That is Which crazy. I don't have yet, but maybe I can draw. Because I have cards. Oh, yeah, we've got ways of getting rid of ongoing, right? I just don't have any in my hand. Let me look. Let me look. But I have ways to draw, so potentially. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have anything that says that on it. Let me see. Let me see. Let me check my other player's hand. Nope. Nope. Yeah, he needs to make it around one more turn. Sorry. Oh man, that's yeah, rough. Right. This I think we're gonna lose just because of starting with this. Like I, I, I don't think that's like it's like yeah. Unless I can get rid of it before. Well no, I just think the mo so many turns will keep going by that we're just gonna keep getting hit by damage. But yeah, you might be able to draw and get rid of it, right? Yeah. So I think I need to play smoke bomb, right? Like this is important now, right? The minus damage dealt to hero yeah. targets for this round. Yep. 
And plus one damage dealt by the Wraith, yeah. Okay, so I'll play this card, which will be for the round. Uh, so minus one damage dealt to hero targets. So we'll have this for the round. There's your two. And then plus one damage dealt by the Wraith. So she has, nope, this one. Uh, okay. Tokens everywhere. Yeah. All right. So I can do two powers because I have a utility belt. Uh, hmm. I'll say I had another card that I could play to. Nope. Okay, uh, let's do, what do I want to do? Okay, I'm going to do the power of the Wraith deals one target, three projectile damage, but it's plus one here. Well, actually, she should have other plus ones because she has this thing that's helping her out. Let's put that there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's plus three, so she's doing six to something. Probably just get rid of one that's in play. Yeah. Okay, this will do 14 damage uh, to the boss. Uh, all right, it's 181, four more, 177. Okay, 177. Okay. Uh, and then my other power, I could do minus one damage to me till the next phase, or I could play another item card, which I will do. I'll just play this item card. Um, so in case ones get discarded, that one can go. So I don't care about that one, really. Okay, uh, draw phase. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this guy. I have no end phase, right? No. Okay, start phase. We're gonna put the top card of your deck under this card, load it up. Um, we're gonna destroy this card. Uh, this card, we're gonna put the top card under our deck. Or under this card, sorry. Oh, did I forget this whole minus two reaction damage? Probably, oh well. Yeah, I'll you could just, just end it once for one of no, the two. No, but oh, then it would have changed. It, it's fine. Yeah. I'll, I'll just save this. I'll save this. It's fine. Just got to remember it. My first time getting in play. Okay. Uh, now we play a card. I guess I'll play this card. Um, no. Let's play this one. This one says play phase. Uh, you may put one card from your trash under an ordinance in play. If you do, uh, put this card under one ordinance card in play. I guess I'll just put it under here. Okay. And then power, um, let's do, do six, oh, minus two is four, four damage to somebody. Mm -hmm. So we'll discard these, four damage. Um, this one is, this is another one's doing the big hits. Well, what's the lowest one? This one's probably the lowest left on it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'll just do four damage here. Yeah, this is also nerfing us from doing damage back, so it's yeah. kind of like taking multiple damage right. returns off of other ones. Uh, okay, and then draw phase and end phase, nothing, go ahead. Okay, start phase, so Tachyon deals herself two fixed fire damage, one to 15. Play phase, you may play one additional card this phase. Okay, I need to dig, so let's first do no, let's 
first do this one. Draw one card. Play up to two cards. That's not what I want. So I can still play two more cards. Let's play this one. Draw three cards. One, two, three. Draw, uh, discard two cards. Uh, Fill up that discard them. pile. And I do have that card. That is one of them. And I can still play one more card. Uh, which... So let me see how many is in my discard, actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then you get this one back in the deck. Yeah. Seven. This one. No, no, this one. You got to do that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> seven. Seven, seven, seven. Can I get, I can't get any others. Hold on one sec. I just want to make sure I can't get any more into, I may draw a card. No. Okay. So I can do, yeah, let's do this. So, ta can this oh, I can do eight. I can do eight. Tachyon deals one target. Oh, X melee damage where X is the number of cards in your trash, which is only seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So who's the worst? Um, There's these two that'll get them one of them one away. Yeah, because well, hopefully we can clear uh, he, can't, it. he can't do anything. Can't I didn't do I didn't, any damage? No, no, not till next turn. And I didn't get the ongoing. I'm still digging for that. Oh man. Um Oh I can I can deal three more damage. So sorry, which one? I don't remember. There's cards in here we know that heal this. I know. But I can get rid of, so I can do seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Total. So Well, so these have nine. And they're both. And the this same. has four, but you can't clear one of these because no. they're more than ten. So you choose. These two are the same. They're doing the three damage to everybody. Okay, let's get rid of one. Let's just get rid of this one. Yeah. Or, or sorry, it's gonna be one away. Yeah. Five, six, seven. Oh no, it's not. Two away. That's fine. I have And then you're finishing it with And then this goes in my discard. This gets shuffled with my draw. Wait, card. what? They had a way of doing like nine damage. I do, but I have to wait till the power phase to do more. Oh sorry. Power phase. Yeah. Play phase, you mean, right? Yeah. No, power phase. Tachyon oh, deals one power. target. Three. I see. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I already did the play. You play additional? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I play additional. It's one target, three melee damage. Oh, then destroy the card if you do that power. Yeah, because I don't want to keep oh. taking. I don't want to keep taking fire, fixed fire damage. And all that was during the play phase, what you just did. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, because you want that, and the discard will come back too. Exactly. But you can't. I see. But that's okay. That's good. Yeah, yeah. So that's shuffled. Okay, so that's a play phase, and then power phase will do this. Tachyon deals one target, three damage. So we'll just choose this one. Yeah. So 10 damage to the boss. 10 damage! Boom! 167. And then destroy this card. So that puts that in my discard. And then draw phase. I just draw one. Okay. And then here, he we need him to deal damage, right? So we're just going to play this one, which is ongoing. Plus one damage dealt by Haka. And at the start phase, discard any number of cards. Haka deals one target X melee damage, where X is the number of cards discarded this way, plus two, then destroy this card. Oh, nice. Okay, and then I don't have anything else. <laughs> and then power phase Haka deals one target, two melee damage. So I guess we'll go for this one, right? We'll mm -hmm. just... Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't heal. Hopefully it doesn't heal. <laughs> and whatever. then he's going to draw. Okay. Environment, please tell me something that gets rid of that oh, card. Oh, I mean, that would be nice. So there's no start. Uh, no, this just has an end phase. Each hero reveals the top card of their deck and either discards it or replaces oh, it. Oh, it's a nice one. Which we'll do right now. Okay. So, discard it or replace it. Um, I'll discard. I'll keep that. Oh, this is I'll the best card. I love up. this card. So, that's staying on top. Okay. So, that didn't go away. Oh my god, that's so annoying. At least we're at least we're negating it by these, but still. All right. So, uh, play. Yeah. Oh no, start no phase. No start phase. Yeah. Play. Oh, another limb. Oh, I hate these ones. Another limb. They do so much damage. Uh, so fourteen health on this one. So that's gonna discard one of these. And this one deals a non-target with the highest. Okay, that one's back. Yeah. There's like multiple of the same one. So annoying. Okay. So end phase. Start here, I guess. Looking for a limb. Yep. Maybe there's no more limbs. We got a lot of limbs out. Uh, I don't know. Nope, oh, there's, there's one. A limb. So discarding one of these. 
This is silly. <laughs> it is silly. But we're supposed to build up and be able to start doing big damage and clear all these out, but I just feel like we're... It's this card that feels like it's yeah, throwing this, it way and off. And again, I didn't find what I need for that. But. Oh, no. Yep. So hopefully... You should all have right. mulligan for it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we were going to have it. <laughs> Well, if you get summon or whatever, I'm like make drawing sure you as summon many, for that card. I'm like drawing as many as I can. If I, I can, find a but... summon effect for you, I'll use it on you. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, we're going to start end phases now. So this one here, um, each non-villain target, three damage. But two because we're all minus. So two damage to everyone. Okay, I'm going to do this reaction. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can do minus two on this. Reaction, minus two damage to the bunker would be dealt. Then if bunker still is dealt damage, destroy the card. Which you're not, so no. that's good. So prevented. And then just two to her. Oh, start of the villain phase, this goes away. Oh, yeah. Okay, then two here, but... Oh, yeah, yeah. Then a 14. Okay, this one. Uh, the hero, sorry, with the lowest HP gets the minus twos. Which, which I is got 14. Me, eight. Okay. So you pass me those again, sorry. Uh, Oh, of course I just built up to do that. Yeah, but it's just his plus two just gets negated, so yeah. you'll still be able to do some damage. Okay, the highest HP takes five melee damage. Uh, I have 13 on 15 this. 15 right here. Okay, so you can take five. But Minus one, so four. Four. Okay, down to 11. Okay. Um, Non-villain target with the lowest HP to melee damage is here, but just one. Okay, that's these ones if you want to... Uh, this card deals non-villain target with the highest HP, uh, but this will have a plus one on it. Oh, yeah. So five more damage to the highest. Uh, I think that's Wraith. I have 13 and 7. 14? Yep. So down, it's it only, only takes four, though. 4, yep. so down to 10. Holy moly. And then this one, this card deals the non-villain target with the lowest HP to melee damage. Alright, so just one again. Well, okay, that guy's going to be dead. He does have heal, but I'm going to have to start and then discard cards. Oh. So we'll see, we'll see. We'll see. We need to get like two of We're these We're playing gone. against Cthulhu over here. If we can get this one gone in one more, we might be okay. But yeah, this is bad. All right, it's on to you. All oh, right. and then these are all gone, right? Uh, yeah, because start phase, the smoke bomb is gone. Oh, that was so helpful. Well, uh, I don't have another one, I don't oh, think. Oh, my God. What's that one? I need to also dig for that card that blocked them all so they couldn't attack. I'm gonna dig. Hmm. Okay. I think I'm gonna play. Uh, let's play throwing knives. I don't have a throwing knives. Nope. Okay. Then we're going to do two powers. Uh, Wraith is going to deal up to three targets, one projectile damage, but she has plus two right now. So it's three three targets, three damage. Um, so let's finish this one off for sure. Okay. We can just stack them and then you can add all the damage separate if you're unless. Oh, that's fine. Eight okay. fixed damage. Okay. So that's taking it down to 159. Okay. Um, yeah, because I'm not necessarily destroying more, but, uh... Oh, yeah, true. Let's take three away from... Mm, I guess I gotta take... Oh, my God, it's just all so bad. Lowest two damage. Yeah, I gotta take three off of here. And then I'll just take three off of here. So go down to nine. You guys see why I use dice when I play games like this? <laughs> <laughs> it's so, so much easier, yeah. I don't know. After this game, I'm only going to play this game with dice for sure. But uh, I just want to show all the tokens off. Um, okay. And then that was my three targets. Then my other power is rate deals one target, uh, five projectile damage. Which will go here, just move that down to one, I think. Unless you have... What am I doing here? Hold on, let me look at my other hero. I know it's better to leave. I could do five off this. This is the one that's hitting the lowest damage, and so is this one, so like... The problem is I'm going to try to dig. I can play an additional card. Okay, I'll just do it to this one. 
I don't know if I'll be able to. Yeah, hopefully we can just get rid of some. Okay. Um, and then end phase, I don't think any. And then draw, or sorry, draw phase. And then end phase. Okay. So that's Wraith. Uh, then we go to Bunker. He does start phase, top card. Top card underneath, loading them up. And that's that. Let's check the hand for plays. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Uh, no, oh, that's okay. three. No, I need this plus one. It's he okay. can do two just with it. So he'll just use that if he. Okay, okay. Oh, maybe actually no, he'll do he nothing. No, he can't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dang it. Okay. Grenade launcher. Yeah, I'll just put a grenade launcher into play. Let's let's just like you got to keep bringing out the big guns, literally. <laughs> All right. But I don't have a way to do like multiple powers right now, so maybe that's dumb. I think I'll just do the piston punch. Um, I took off three. Yeah, he deals one target three melee damage. If that damage destroys the target, put this card under one ordinance in play, but there's no one to deal uh, to destroy. I don't really want to do it on that one. Kind of a waste. That works, because then I can use this ability and I can just discard six cards and get rid of that. Yeah, but... This is still sitting here, and this is bugging me. Can you do, like, a ping damage, or is that, like, the dumbest thing? I can do a ping damage. I just don't know. Like, I have this one where I can do one damage off everyone. Oh, that's perfect. So then leaving some with one left is good. Okay, so I'll just do that. Okay, then power phase. I can destroy up to two cards under this card. Each time you destroy one card this way, he deals one target three projectile damage. Oh, I see. So I could do... Actually, no. I don't know. We gotta be smart. We gotta be super smart. So if I deal this one six, or I could do just one target six damage and get rid of that. Deal you know, one target three. Yeah, I think I just do two from under here. Oh, hold on. I have a rampage card. Tell me more. Haka deals each non-hero target five melee damage and each hero target two melee damage. So I'll deal five damage to everyone here, okay. but then every, all well, each, of us take, to know. each of us take two. That would have been good to know. That happens right now? Like well, when I you can get do to a one turn? shot, yeah. Okay, so let's, let's be smart about this. With... Okay, so you could do five, then why did I get this down to one then? I didn't even look at that, sorry. Yeah, yeah, so so if I go back to her turn and, and I, I could put five back on here, right? Because mm -hmm. you can do how much? Five. Oh. I can, no, I can do five with him. Yeah, yeah. And she can do one on everybody. Okay, that's, so we got to get everything down to like a six-ish. Yeah, so, so these two are, are gone. So when she did that five, I'm going to do it to like this one right here. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then she did like spread out damage, but I think that's fine. So that was, that was, that was Wraith. Let's do that. And then this oh, guy. Will be, actually, will it be minus? Yeah. So I'll only do three damage. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's This Serenity is so annoying. Now. This is so annoying. So I'm going to do three damage. But then you have so something then, else that's happening. Oh, yeah. Getting more damage. But it's only going to hit one person. Okay. And then what's she doing, though? She's doing one across the board? Yeah. So you get him down to like four? Yeah. I'll just do that. Who cares? Okay, so what I'll do then is this one. I'll discard two cards from under here, and I'll do three to this one. And I'll do three to this one. Okay. Those two are still there. I don't so know. They're still gone, right. and then... Yeah, I don't know. But I feel like there's some way there we could have got rid of way more... Uh, okay, and then uh, let's do draw and end phase. Nothing going on. Go ahead. Okay. Right. I'm going to play HUD goggles. <laughs> Damage dealt by Tachyon is irreducible, and you may play one additional card this play phase. So I will play Tachyon deals each non-hero target one melee damage, and it's all irreducible, so it's a, that guy can't block it. Pew! 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 Okay. Oh! He minus, can't block it. 
But I think I took away... Oh yeah, because those are unblockable. Those were, yeah, 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 we haven't actually hit him yet. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're all using the... Oh, now it's getting stuck again. Uh, 58. Okay. Oh, I can do it again. Oh, no, I can't. Not yet. Okay. Uh, that was my play phase. Power. Reveal the top card of my deck. You did two cards or whatever? Yeah, that card, and then I played that card oh, that okay. did that. Um, power, I can reveal this. That's staying on the top. I need that. And then... Draw phase. Draw that. And phase nothing. Okay, so then we go to here. So start phase. I have to do this first. Discard any number of cards. Hawka deals target one target X damage where X is the number of cards discarded this way plus two. So uh, the plus two is just canceled out by this. But so. you have a built-in plus, oh, plus one, one too, yeah. right? So okay. there's really only minus one to so everything. Need... Not minus two. I need this one. I can't just... Nope. Uh, this one I can't discard, and this one I can't discard. So, I could discard, so I, if I can discard five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <sighs> Any one shy? I could discard that one. I would get rid of somebody. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Okay, so, uh, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'll get rid of this one. And you add it in. It's only negative one, right? Because you got a plus one, well, this, minus this, two. This plus two just cancels these ones. And then that plus one is still there. So I and get you plus added one. This plus one in? Yep. Okay. And then this. So you discarded seven? I discarded. To get rid of eight? Yes. Okay. Just making sure. Yep. Uh, okay. okay. Then How? destroy this card. Okay. Uh, 14 fixed damage. Uh, okay, so let's take a Oh, I wasn't even done the card. Sorry, I wasn't even done the card. Oh, it's in my hand. 144. It was in my hand, sorry. Okay. 144. So now play phase. Uh, Hawka deals each non-hero target 5 melee damage, but it's minus 2, so 3 melee damage to everyone. So oh, these... that plus 1 get destroyed? Yeah. It, no! Yeah, because I have to destroy it after I use it. No! So these two are gone. Yep, and then 5 off here, or 4 off here, what'd you, what'd you say? Uh, 3. So... Three off this one, and we'll put seven back from this one. And then we're taking 22 damage off of the boss. And then this is gone now, because that was the card that was giving that to her. Okay, 20, so what, what are we doing? 22 damage. 22 more damage? To the boss, yeah. Like, okay. Well, that's from these, yeah, yeah, okay. from these going. 22? Yep. <laughs> 122! Okay, there's a little bit more to this, but I already know it's two. Uh, uh, each hero target gets two melee damage. Sorry, so that's each of us. Oh, and whenever yeah, it's Hakka two. destroys a card with this, a target with this damage, draw a card. So even if you destroyed one of us, you still draw more cards. Yeah, so oh. so far it's, it's two, two, but then we take two damage, one, two, and it's each other or uh, each hero, so that's himself. He's going to die soon, but I'll do fine. this reaction on your turn, because this is once per turn. Oh, I get to do reaction too. Sorry, yeah. So once per turn, I'll ignore your two damage on Bunker. Get okay. out of here. And then, he'll. so that was two for him. So he draws two cards. And then she has a reaction. Draw one card. Oh, reaction, I think, is... I think the reaction is only when a villain is hitting you. Yeah. When, when you would be dealt damage by a non-hero no! target. So you have to take the two. Sorry. So I can't do that either. Okay. All right. And Seven, then nine. power, oh he does one target, two melee damage, but he's blocked two melee damage, so he does nothing. Womp womp, and then he draws. Okay, I should look at his cards, though. Oh, I got that again! Great, but... But, he hopefully... We need to get rid of that ongoing card so we can all survive another round. That's true, that's true. Okay. We're really low, we're all in single digits. Uh, so, well, one person isn't, but... No start. He so might be dead draw. before his turn. I know, that's true, he could. Okay. Oh, each heart. E okay, let's do this one first. Each hero reveals the top card of their deck, and they discard it or replace it. Oh, I got to destroy an ongoing card here. That's staying on the top, but I won't get it in time. Uh, that's going to stay there. That sucks. Each hero might yeah, that's going to stay there as well. I'll discard that one. Okay, and then this end phase. Each target, each target regains one HP. So oh, I guess that's them wow. too. So she he goes to freaking troll. This deck's troll and. And then these guys each get one, and one, and one. I mean, I, I that one might keep him alive just to be able to play that card. Sure. Um, I think this is 
no longer there, right? Because now it's going to the start of, yeah, start start of the villain phase. Villain that clears. phase. Uh, there's no start. We're going to play a card. Which... Disrupt the field. Destroy all environment cards. Where have you been? Oh, Get them all gone. All gone. So all these plus ones. GTFO. Play the top card of the environment deck. If it's the same copy of that same damn card, I'm flipping the table. No, it's not. All right. <laughs> but we'll deal with it just as an end phase. That now we'll deal play with the phase. top card of the villain deck. Uh, what do we got here? Earth Sacrifice. Oh, here we go. Destroy. Now this is going to hit us because this is the one that came out first turn and did nothing. Destroy three hero ongoing cards. No, I only have one. I have none here. I can destroy one. Yep. So oh, I'm only the only one, one goes away. Okay. Yep. Uh, discard as many cards from the top of the environment deck as cards destroyed by this card. So, so one, one card discarded off here. We're going to see that card come back really quick, I think. Yeah, that's annoying. Okay. And now we do end phase. So we're going to look for a limb. Oh, there's one right on the top. Great. Limbs never end. Sorry, I'm just looking. The minus two damage dealt by Haka applies to when you damage heroes. Oh, I thought it said reactions were only in the villain turn. Oh, so then we get two damage back. Well, no, no, no. It was because I was minus two here, but that the way that card is where did you write? Yes, you're right, you're right. Uh, two melee damage, which I had two minus counters. So we took, we minus them off them, but we didn't minus them off us. Oh, so we duh. get two damage back each. Duh, duh, Thank duh, you, duh. that's huge. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> that's huge. Okay, so I go back to 14. Thank 12. you. And then yeah, we need to 11. Back. Okay, wow, that could be huge. Yeah. All the little I things. I was only thinking it of, of it a negative against the boss. All right. But I wasn't thinking about it for us. It's not over yet. Okay. We got Baumi in our corner here. Sorry, That's... so this one came out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have to discard for that. Yeah, yeah, off the top. Okay. And then we're doing end phases now. Yeah. Uh, this card deals the non villain target with the highest melee damage, or uh, highest HP. Yep, yep, this is a four, uh, uh, four melee damage. Going to ten. I wish I had that. This card deals a non-villain target with the lowest HP, two melee damage. Seven, okay. One, two, going to five. This card deals each target in the hero's play area with the most... This target deals each target in the hero play area with the most cards in play. Two toxic damage. Where's One, two, three, four, five. You, you got that beat? No. Nope. nope. All right, two toxic damage. Back down to nine. Okay. Uh, and then destroy one ongoing card, which I do not have, and one item card, which I left this there just for that oh, purpose. Nice. <laughs> gotcha. And that's the villain's phase done. Okay, we survived. Okay, we're we're catching up. The stream's here. not over yet. We're catching up here. <laughs> we didn't die. Uh, okay, so play cards. Let's see. Yeah, this never really works against that one. Wraith deals one non-hero target one toxic damage. If that target is destroyed, reveal the top card of each deck. You may discard any revealed cards, play the other revealed cards. Mm, no, not close enough for that. All right, looks like we're gonna play Suture Self. Suture Self? I, I don't know, Suture, whatever. Uh, Ray three gains two HP. Then I salvage one item card. So just keep dancing between nine and eleven here. Okay. Then I salvage an item card. I'll just take back my smoke bombs, I guess. That will be discarded. Power. Uh, Wraith deals up to three targets three damage. So three damage off of all these. That one, just take away the 10, drop 7, or whatever, or it goes to 8, yeah. Okay. Okay. And then, I will deal one target, five projectile damage. Okay, good. It's fine, I do have the ping again. Okay. Well, this guy, oh yeah, this guy can do other stuff. Mm -hmm. You can do two, get three damage. What did I just take off there? Five? Yeah. All right, we'll take off this one because I can destroy both these with this guy. Yep. But then the ping doesn't do as good, but I don't care. I, I have other things. Okay. 
Uh, all right. That's the two, then draw. Yeah, Mike says, now you're cooking. I feel better about this. Yeah, so now I got an ongoing card. I'm going to hold this thing tighter, and it's going to get bend the card and destroy <laughs> it. I'm not letting it out of I my hand. I still haven't even seen any. I'll put it in my, my pocket. Any of those. Not lose it. All right. Bunker, start. He's going to load up his guns off the top of the deck. Hopefully not putting my best cards underneath there that I need, because I feel like this game is my third or fourth ga third game playing with Bunker. And I just am, certain cards that showed up the other two times are just not showing up to let him do two powers at a time and stuff. I bet they've been getting discarded or fired out of his guns or they're sitting under his guns right now. Nope, I just Fine. haven't seen them. <laughs> uh, okay. So I will destroy up to two cards. Uh, and each card destroyed this way will do one target, three projectile damage. Nope, still haven't seen them. Okay. Uh, so I'll do three here and three here. So we'll do... Uh, 20 total damage to the boss. Pew, pew. Down to 103. We're almost halfway there. We got this. We got uh, this. Then I'll draw. Oh, did I play? I probably didn't, you play. didn't play. I just got so excited to fire. <laughs> um, oh. Did you change something? We could say that I destroyed one of them first. And then I'll just do three damage to this yeah, one. Because I could do three... Yeah, because then I don't, I won't do okay, the rampage. So yeah, this would have, in my play phase, dealt three uh, damage to a melee, or one target, three melee damage. If it destroyed that target, which it would have, I get to put this ordinance under a card in play. I guess I'll just throw it under this one. Okay, then I'll do draw. There it is. This is the card I'm looking for, so I can do two additional wow. powers this phase. So I could, like, do this power, this power, and this power, whatever, fire them all off. Get a big turn going, but now we've like cooled it down. But I'll do them here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, maybe it'll get more limbs, I'm sure. For sure. Uh, then and phase nothing. Go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna use this for a minute to track my how many cards I'm playing because I'm gonna be able you to do, do some combo. You want. Here. So right now I can play two. <laughs> Matthew says we're rooting. We're all rooting for you both. You and your limb. <laughs> <laughs> now you're cooking. So this is the first card I'm gonna play. So that goes down to one. So it says draw a card. And then it says play up to two cards. So we're going back to three. Uh, let's play this one. So this goes down to two. Uh, each hero draws one card. Draw cards. Each Draw hero. cards. And then I may play one card. Go okay. back to three. Um, can't play that one. Okay. So let's do this one for two. Tachyon deals one target, two melee damage. I may draw a card. Okay. Let's do one more. Tachyon deals. Oh, each. Oh, each. Sorry, it should have been that one. Oh, one's... no, no, no. That was one. That's a different this card. Different is. card. Uh, each non-hero target, one melee damage. Okay, so it's reduced on her. Oh, well, you do it this one first, I guess. I don't know. We decide, Oh, right? my damage is irreducible. Oh, okay. So either way, it does yep. it. Okay, 102. Then this one's gone. This will deal 12 fixed energy. Okay. Uh, so that will take it down to 90. Okay. 90. Oh, we're in double digits. We're in double digits. Last card I'm going to play is draw three cards. One, two, three, and then discard two. Um, this one, I already haven't played. Bob, I never said I didn't have fun playing the game. I just had to highlight the my nitpicks, negatives, okay. issues, whatever. Which I was going to save to the end of the video, but of course I said it at the beginning. And <laughs> pissed off a few people. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> They've already left. You can't apologize. But usually, now, I like them. to do it at the end so they can leave after you know and just enjoy the game instead of hearing like that their game's not perfect that they thought was perfect. Uh, yeah, so I power. <laughs> I'm gonna reveal a card. Oh, now I get to destroy the ongoing card. But you have one, right? So maybe I'll put this in my discard for a big hit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna discard it and then draw phase. I, I will draw. I, I have many positives to still talk about the game. I just didn't want to keep delaying the play longer than the hour of the intro and everything. But. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, there, I have some other nitpicks, but mainly positive stuff that I still am, have not said. So, uh, again, based on our, if it'll be three plays. So who knows, but uh, yeah. Okay, he will do, just he'll play a limited card, which is, gives him another power option. And power, I'll do this one. Haka, 
Haka deals up to two targets, three melee damage, but it'll just be two here. So it's minus this you yeah. got, right? So just two? Yep. Down to 88. And then he'll draw. And no end phase. I was okay. having a great time, so poo to you. <laughs> Whatever, I'm having a good time. <laughs> I wouldn't be doing this if I wasn't. I haven't wasn't. given my thoughts yet, Bob. How do you know what, I, what I'm what i thinking? I wouldn't have scheduled the stream today if I wasn't having a good time this afternoon playing it. Mm -hmm. Okay, no start phase. Play phase. Oh, we got another one of those guards. So yeah, hopefully, uh, this is going to be... A, so they get four health. Yeah, this is going to be where we need to flip now. So we don't have one to discard. No, we, we don't. So, sorry. So, yeah. So we don't have one to discard, so it just fizzles. Sorry, what are this. you... So he, they're a hero target. This only cares about non-hero targets. Oh, I keep forgetting targets. that these are heroes. Yeah, those are hero targets. So anytime this this yes. uh, Cthulhu beast woman wants to hurt hero targets, these are counted these are as heroes. hero targets. Sorry, sorry. And this only cares about non-hero targets, which is basically like her own stuff, or if there's bad ones in there, yeah. but I don't think so. Okay, so not right now. So then end phase. Each hero reveals a top card of their deck. If revealed card is a one-shot card, discard that card. Otherwise, play it item it's limited i do not have a sonic so neutralizer in place so i can play it okay uh this card ongoing yeah it's just one shot if it's environment a one cards cannot be played so it's a little too late and this could destroy the start of my start phase that's okay. fine <laughs> i got a one shot so i'm gonna discard it and ongoing and i don't have this one in place so we'll play that okay that's that one uh this one end phase this card deals the villain target with the highest hp2 lightning damage oh this is gone because we got rid of that oh, last yeah. card so i don't know so if we I shouldn't have minus it yeah more yeah damage, we then. should do one more and then this does two damage so three total 85 okie dokie no card so we'll do a play that's a one shot this one again how many of these are in there? Well, we did shuffle. Destroy uh, two hero ongoing cards. Oh, I just got one here. So I can destroy this one. It's doing nothing. This is not ongoing. Okay, I could... You I no, could... Do you have ongoings? Because have, we have to get rid of one more. Oh, yeah, this one is only one. I have no other, yeah, so you have, to, you have to pick one. That's the one that I play for. Okay, then discard as many cards from the top of the environment deck. But there is none to discard. And discarding doesn't make you reshuffle the deck. Only drawing and playing do. So this just does nothing after that. Okay. And then end phase. End phase. It's going to look for a limb. There's no, one. there's a limb. How many limbs? Oh, it's limb? a little limb, so that's okay. That's good. But it probably does a bad effect. This card deals each target in the hero play area with the most cards in play. Oh, it's that one. So one, two, three, four, five. Yep. Two toxic damage. Yep. And then destroy an ongoing card and an item card. I just got rid of my only ongoing that I had on my half of the board here. And the item card... Oh, look, I got this card just now. Imagine I had this one earlier, select one environment card and play. Until your start phase, that card has no game text. Imagine. Well, I wouldn't have been doing as much damage because this would have been one of the powers oh, I was yeah, choosing. Oh, yeah, true. But, but that, that was causing a lot of but damage. It, it could have, like, instead of dealing damage, it was it could have prevented damage and keep us alive longer. Yeah. Uh, but I'll just get rid of it, I guess, unless that's going to come out again. No, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go with the keep pushing damage. Um, yeah, let's just keep going. Okay, and this came in, but again, this is discard, so we don't have to worry about that. Yeah. So I think All it's right. back to you. Wraith. That was an easy one. And we only have six six damage Wraith. to get through here. Yeah, but we still have 85 here to go. Yeah, but this six damage And she's just... about to heal and flip and become really damage dealing. Yeah. So we need to hurry. Okay, let's see what I got. This is uh, Aeon's end time when you switch to hitting the villain <laughs> from the minions or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> hear ya, hear ya. Is there an ongoing card that's worth destroying now? No, so I'll hold that. Well, I guess I could smoke bomb, but it doesn't look like much damage will be done, but I still should do it, I think. Any damage done to here just translates to the boss, because this is six, and it'll do six damage, so. Okay, I'll smoke bombs. Maybe not the best time for it, but I'm going to do it. Uh, so it'll minus one damage to all heroes. Oh, here you go. got one, yeah. Okay, uh, and then Wraith gets another plus one. Uh, where was that? Right here. Okay. 
And then power phase. You do one target, six damage. Pew! Gone. This will do six damage to the boss, going down to 79. Okay. And then I guess she is going to just power phase. I guess she'll just deal up to three targets, one projectile damage, but it's plus two, plus three. So four more damage. Down to 75. Okay, draw and end. Okay, and nothing here for end phase. Okay, start phase, loading up the guns. Yep, get the guns ready for Loading those big guns. hits. Well, I don't know. I don't really have that one going. Uh, I'll do a play. Drew, hello. Nice to hey, see you live. Hello. Okay, let's just do turret mode. I want to play this. It's plus one damage. Oh, maybe I should wait one more on that. Yeah, I'm going to wait one more because I could actually get a weapon. Okay, yeah. Mm. That would make me do six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten damage. No, it's better to do more later. Okay, I'm just gonna put my Omni Cannon in play. Let's try to build this thing up. Okay, then uh, power phase. I will just destroy two cards under here. And I'll deal one target, six irreducible projectile damage. So we're down to 69. And draw. Ooh, Galling gun. Okay, and end phase, go ahead. All right, so again, I'm gonna use my dice to track because it just makes more sense, e easier for me. So first card is going to be This one, uh, so down to one. <laughs> Each hero may draw one card. All draw right, card. yeah. Oh, another turret mode. I, I should have played that one. Play a card. So back up to two. Um, we'll do that again. Go down to one. Each hero may draw a card. What? Got two of them. Yep. And then I may play a card. Back to two. Um. Uh, play this one, uh, draw one card, play up to two cards, come back to three. This is the card I wanted. Get uh, can I do any more? Hold on, Get I can still play two more cards. So let's do two damage, uh, two melee damage to him. There's one target, two melee damage. And then I may draw a card. 67. Holy. Hold on, hold on. Keep it in your hand. Keep it oh. In your hand. Uh, oh, hold on. Oh, this is just one, but I want to get it in my discard, so sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, one damage. 66. Each, oh, yeah, each non-hero. That's a hero, so that's good. Okay, now, the fun part. The last card. That gets highlighted on the big screen. <laughs> Tachyon. Deals up to X targets, three sonic damage each. Where, oh. Oh, no, no. This, this is not, not, this not the I one wanted. you're looking for. That's not the one you want to play right now. Oh, that's not what I even wanted. You, okay, you so read, hold on, hold on. You got to read your cards. RTFC. Then I'll just play this. So if I get uh, hit, I can draw. Can sorry, I put sorry. Down then? Yeah, yeah. I, I just saw it in your trash, and I just thought no, it was it's the not same that card. One. So you Where haven't is, seen that one yet? I've seen it once. It's shuffled. Or it should be. Oh, no. Yeah, it's here, but I haven't seen the other ones to be able to. Dang it, dang it. Oh, oh, it's coming, no. it's coming. Okay. We're not going to survive. It's okay, it's okay. I've built up for a huge one, so when it hits, it's like, this is how many cards are in my trash so far. Darren, it's not about her being first. She just didn't see her draw cards early in the game to allow us to all draw. It, there is, obviously, her going first could have done certain things. There are heroes that maybe if they went first, you get like a little advantage, 
But you just keep cycling around the yeah, table anyway. Yeah, cycles around. It doesn't matter. So maybe just that first turn. But I didn't yeah. have those in the beginning anyways. So but I feel it hasn't mattered much. We had a healing character the first time we played. We put him as the third player, even though he probably should have been the first because he could have prevented damage. But since he still gets to go before the villain, kind of doesn't matter. And it stays around till it's his turn again. Yeah, so, so it's still a like full that, yeah. round of effect usually. Yeah. But I understand. I thought the same way when I first started playing. All right, we're going to reveal but the top card. I think card it's still okay. For the power. Here it is. Here it is. So I'm going to not discard it. Oh, okay. Can I see though just to make sure? You can make sure. It's on I, top I of my I won't get anyone excited if, if nothing exciting is going to happen again. Uh, attacking on deals one target. X melee damage for X is the number of cards in your trash. Shuffle your trash into your deck. Light speed barrage. Oh, <laughs> this is on the top of my deck in the power phase, but I'm going to draw it right now in the draw phase. Great. So it's in my hand. We're going to get that off next turn. Mike okay. says legacy always go first. Mike, listen. Well, I don't think it fully At matters. At our table, we do what we want, all right? Yeah. Also, the way Homelander that Homelander goes... will go in whatever order I put him in. <laughs> I mean, Legacy will go in whatever order I put him in, okay? The other thing, too, is I like to play support characters, and the way this cycles around, yeah, Rob yeah. and I would have to switch seats, and that's... that's, that's yeah, we happen. try it when we're practicing the games, we try to sit kind of the same way around yeah. the table, and if a game goes in just clockwise order and we can't choose, then if Mel wants to play a certain character and it's just not good, it's how we're going to sit on stream anyway. Yeah. Uh, because I have, like, the computer stuff beside me over here, so I sit on this side, so it just... That's how works well i mean we could have house rules just to go in reverse order and put the uh oh put yeah, the yeah. other thing on the other side we could have solved it that way but eh, it's, who cares? it's the way the game works it's fine <laughs> okay so she has no end phase <laughs> on here so start phase you may destroy any ongoing cards if you do destroy this card i'm not going to do that i didn't just draw some cards so what did i draw <laughs> homelander slash superman doesn't approve of this message. <laughs> Slash Captain America. <laughs> okay, we're just going to play this. So his damage is plus one. And that's that. Power. Uh, we'll do this one. Haka deals up to two targets, three melee damage, but it's four. So I'll deal four melee damage there. Boom, down to 62. And then he draws a card in no end phase. Okay. Who is the uh, Superman type character from um, the Watchmen? Because I know that's like the Watchmen is like a spin on a, a bunch of main heroes, but they didn't want to use them in that storyline. Uh, I forget. I forget the names. I think it's the. I'm not gonna spoil it, but I think it's the guy with all the gold. I think that's who like simulates. No, but he's like more of a Batman. I don't know. But maybe the Owl guy is more Batman. I don't remember. Anyways, I'm just curious. That's something I thought about today, and I, I didn't know. Captain Marvel doesn't approve either. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Manhattan? Yeah, I guess he would be the Superman, right? Yeah. Maybe Dr. Manhattan. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, that would make sense. That makes sense. So yes, Dr. Doctor Manhattan, Legacy, Homelander, Captain America, Superman, and uh, Captain Marvel all don't approve of this message. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to... Uh, environment phase, we have a start phase. A hero may discard two cards. If they do, destroy one environment card. Neither of these are bad, so it's fine. Neither of these are bad, so I'm not doing it. I don't think you're going to do it either. Play. So we can't play, so I'm shuffling. So I think that's going to flip now, because I'm shuffling this. Oh no! What does it say? What does it say? Uh, when the environment trash is shuffled in the environment deck, Akash Buta regains heroes so four hp then flips so it's not being shuffled into the deck the deck just itself is being shuffled well, that's what they mean oh, okay uh so back up to 66 okay okay we're still in the play phase i haven't been able to play now yet. this is akash buta phase two avatar of destruction still just 200 health is the toll it doesn't say to give it any more or anything um and the same thing when the environment trash is shuffled in the environment deck Regains 4 HP, then flips again. Uh, after a non-hero target is destroyed. So basically, I think if you destroy the limbs. Discard the top card of the environment deck. Okay. So for every limb we destroy, we're getting through the deck. It's, it's slower now. And then, uh, because, but we want to do it. So it's obviously the game's trolling us. Like, haha, you want the environment deck to cycle again so you can get back to the other side. Because the end phase right here is Akash Buta deals each non-villain target to fire damage. But at least it's not looking for limbs again. Right. So I don't know. Maybe this is a better side for us. Uh, well, hopefully we can just be fast on this side. And again, it has a whole advanced text. If you want to play on like advanced mode, 
and use like events with it too and stuff. You can you can really spice up these scenarios um, and make them different. Okay, so here is the one that we're getting in the play phase. Uh, okay, so it just has an end phase. So actually, we'll go here first. Each hero reveals the top card of their deck. If the revealed card is a one shot card, discard uh, discard it. Otherwise, play it. So I drew a one shot here from Wraith. Ongoing. I'll discard it. And then I drew upgrade mode, which I don't have it in play. Oh, it's ongoing for both. Nice. After this card is played, summon one item card. And I can't use powers, but it says start phase, destroy the card. So I think it's still do what this does after it's played. Yeah, I think so. I summon one item card. And then I have on this one. Oh, yeah, I guess you just do yours first so they're not confused. Expandable power bank. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Expandable power bank. I sum oops, wrong deck. Wrong hand. Okay, and I have this one. After this card is played, Hakka deals up to two targets, two melee damage each, minus one dealt by those targets. So I'm dealing three here, and then she'll get a minus one. Oh, down to sixty-three. And she'll be dealing us one minus one back. Uh so minus one damage dealt by this target. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that was that one. This one, uh, this card deals the villain target with the highest HP to lightning damage. So two more to the boss. Uh, down to 61. And then end phase, one hero may collect one ongoing card. Who has a good ongoing card? Uh, not me. Let me look through my discard pile and see what I got so far. I don't know the heroes well enough. I don't know what he has, but... Uh... Doesn't she have good ongoing cards? I don't know. I haven't seen any of this game. Oh, let me check my hand, actually. Maybe I have one. I might have another one. I mean, I, I no, have... I, I, I don't I'll, have any... I'll do with him. He's got a, he's got a bunch in my hand. Yeah, already. sure. Go okay. ahead. Yeah, we haven't seen him. Uh, this is so the first game we've seen I him. I want to see new stuff, so... Search the deck, yeah. Minus one damage dealt. Yeah, I mean, that's helpful. Oh, actually, where does it go? Put them in your hand. Yeah, the villains in this set, uh, I can see them right now, is, uh, oh, actually, right here in the lore book, right? Um, these are the villains that come in this uh, revised set. Baron, Blade, Citizen Dawn, Grand Warlord Voss, Omnitron, the Matriarch, and Akash Buta, as featured in this stream. <laughs> you say that. Akash Buta. <laughs> you just say it's so different than the others. It's like, uh, I think it's trying to be like the Cthulhu thing, like a weird name that's like you're not supposed to pronounce or something. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Maybe. I'm not sure. But there's probably a backstory that's like all, all explains what where it's from and everything. Okay, so that's that done. Uh, no start, so play phase here. And we don't got a we or we don't have a limb, sorry. Uh, return to the earth, one shot, destroy four minus one item cards. So three, three item, item cards, cards and restore all of environment targets and primal limb cards to their max health. Okay, so I'll destroy this item card that's going at the start of the phase. Item card, item card. Uh, uh I can do this one. I can destroy this one that prevents. Oh, I can do this one because this one. Oh, that's not. not I'll destroy this one that's. Item. I keep forgetting to react. In, okay, so anyway, that's. So. And I got one, so that's three. Okay. okay. So that's that. And then end phase. Uh, she deals each non hero villain. Sorry, non villain target two fire damage, but it's minus one. So everyone takes one damage. And minus one because I had smoke bombs. Oh, so oh, they take none. Oh, smoke bombs. Hold on. Did I just get rid of that? What did I get rid of? How does it work though? Like if you've already given Where the effect. Where did that just go? Oh, smoke bomb! I put in the wrong discard pile. Oh, how many times have I done that? <laughs> Playing two-handed is not for me. No, I've only done it once. Okay. Okay. Uh. How is it worded though? Has it already happened? Well, no. It just it's just oh, a, passive. It's a passive. So I need to keep that one in play. Let me do the one that deals damage to separate targets. Oh yeah, because we should be okay knives. now. Because yeah. I have the big hit with my discard. Yeah. And he can discard, I think. So we'll leave smoke bomb in place so we get the negative. So it's okay, so preventing all the damage. Just this one takes one. Oh, they, no. don't, they don't have a prevention. Okay. okay. All right, back to you then. Do they though? Uh, they are a hero target. So minus one. Dealt oh, to okay. hero. So that's a hero target, that's right? A hero it target, says. yeah. So sorry then. This will nice try here. though. A smoke bomb doesn't, it also whiffs over to this spot, <laughs> making a cloud. Okay. okay. Sounds good. All right. But uh, now they all go away, right? Yeah, start risky. a phase, this gets destroyed. So all the minus ones on their heroes go away. And the plus one to Wraith off that card is gone. Okay, Wraith, what are you going to do? Play. Is there a bad ongoing? No. 
This lets us play those cards if they're as long as they're not one shots. Okay. This one is dealing too much. I wish damage. that was so nice to us earlier in the game. I know. And then this lets someone collect a card. Mm, well, I guess. I guess I'll play the impromptu invention. Draw one card. Discover one item card. I thought I was going to die like four turns ago at five health and I'll take stun bolt. He's still alive. I cannot believe that. And now I may play one card. Okay, I'll put in stun bolts. Uh, I'll trigger that power. Wraith deals with the target one lightning damage. Bzz. And then. Oh yeah, plus two more. Uh, no, it's lightning. This only does plus two projectile damage. Oh. So anyways, Wraith deals one target, one lightning damage until your start phase, minus one damage dealt by the target. Oh, I forgot to take it off. Where was that one from? I don't know. Oh, that was from my thing. <coughs> yeah. Okay, so minus one to the damage. We're, we're going to nerf this thing. And then I'll trigger this. Wraith deals one target, three projectile, plus two is five damage down to 55. Yeah, I think we got it this time. Uh, okay, let's see drink. Mm -hmm. I'll draw. Oh, nice. And no end on her, so mm -hmm. that's good. All right, my buddy is going to load up his bunker, or bunker's going to load up his guns. Okay, start of phase. Okay, play. Let me check what he's got. Uh, let's do a turret mode. This is my favorite part. Yeah, that's why I play bunker. Plus one damage dealt by bunker. Okay, we'll get that. Plus one damage. Boom. Start phase. We destroy it. We're already past the start phase, so we don't do that yet. So it's like a one turn, one round thing. Uh, power phase. You may do two additional powers. Yeah. So um, let's start with this one. Destroy two cards on this card. If you do, bunker deals one target six irreducible projectile damage, but plus seven. one seven damage. So we'll go down to 48. Okay, then we'll destroy up to two cards under this. Uh, Hooker deals one target. Destroy up to two cards under this card. Each time you destroy one card this way, Bunker deals one target, three projectile damage. I think I actually- Those two separates. Yeah, I think I could have been doing this to the same target all the time, but I don't think I was with this one. Oh, that's But I okay. think she doesn't work that way, but this guy does. So that would be four and four, so eight damage. Yes. Yeah, because... Pretty sure. Yeah, because there's like separate instances. Yeah, I may have messed that up before. Uh, so 40. This one, destroy all cards. You need... To, no, you're right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. What? I thought you only did four damage there. Did you only take away four damage or eight damage? I did eight. It was at 48. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Sorry, yeah, that's what I was going to say. But... Okay, then this one, or I could just do this one... This one is destroy all cards under this deal. One target X energy damage or X is the number of cards destroyed times two. Yeah, sure, whatever. It's not normally how I like to do that one, but uh, so it's one times two is two plus one is three more damage. 37. And let's go to draw. Recharge. And then we'll go to end phase. Oh, sorry, this had to be destroyed. This was destroyed in the start phase, sorry. And then end phase, nothing. All right, go ahead. Okay, uh, start phase. Tachyon deals herself two fixed fire damage. Uh, we're not minus. Uh, one, two, she's down to eight. Play phase, I may play one additional and one additional, so I can play three cards to start. I'm going to get a couple more maybe in my... Uh, See you later, Drew. Okay. <laughs> Let's do <laughs> this one first. Draw three cards and discard two. One, two, three. I just want to get some cards into my discard pile. Discard two cards. Uh, not that one. One. Two. Okay. Uh. Each hero may draw one card, and, and then I may play one card, going back to three. Um, uh, 
this one, Tachyon deals X targets, which X is the number of my trash. Three sonic damage, but it's just going to be three damage to the boss. Okay, 34. That's two. Uh, this is... Uh, after this card is played, Tachyon deals each non-hero target one sonic damage. So one. And then targets dealt damage this way cannot deal damage, so she can't deal damage yeah. if we don't kill her. And that's only for oh, one round. Oh, she's still 33. I don't know who's doing 33 damage. Well, oh, not... are you going to? Yeah, I know. No, get but it? I think between both of these. Light speed rampage, do okay. it! So I deal one damage. Yeah, that's what we're here for. For one target, X melee damage, where X is the number of cards in my trash. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 damage! So that is taking it down to 10. Okay, he's got it then. We got it, we got it. So then, now that's my, my discard. Okay. My finger's getting hurt rubbing that wheel. Oh. It's like really <laughs> tough. <laughs> and then now power phase. Uh, so power phase, I can reveal the top card. Sure. I'll keep, or keep it. And then I draw a card. But in the draw phase, I might draw additional card. Okay, she's done. Here, start phase. Start phase, destroy this card. That was... We already took that away. Uh, and now this one. Discard any number of cards. Uh, Hawka deals one target, X melee damage, where X is the number of cards discarded this way, plus two. What does he need? Ten? ten so I have yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Boom! I still have one card left. We did it! So I was at five and eight. I thought they, they, they were going to die 12. for sure. No, once you cut all limbs off, it I doesn't know. do much damage. I know. I was just sad because... Oh, it still had... M more... Three. Uh, four. Four limbs were Holy. still in the deck, but because it flipped when it did, it stopped pulling limbs out. Wow. But we could have still drew into more. They were just uh, yeah, we were lucky four down. Once she flipped, we only drew one more card. Oh, it was two cards. Uh, not the next card, but the card after would have drawn more limbs, which would have pulled more into play, and it would started doing horrible stuff again. But then that also would have given us ways of damaging it. All that final like 70 something damage felt like it came from all of our cards. Yeah. We had no limbs to help us get damage off. So it kind of slowed down that way too. But. but that was good. We were able to build up for big hits at the end there. Yeah, I just didn't get this one. I, I, there's a combo card that works with this really well. This is the one that is kind of like what you're doing. This one, if I get it early in the game and start throwing cards under it like crazy, I can do like one big hit where it's like get rid of all the cards under it and then times two, just kind of like what you did, a big blast. But yeah. I, I needed to start getting rid of those limbs early, so I went with the least ones, drew this later, and then just didn't get it going. I kept choosing to just try to cut off limbs to stem the bleeding. Um, but I also would have started with this one if I saw it early. I didn't draw this till like two, a turn or two ago. Um, but this one, if I get this in play, I know it gets rid of ongoing. We've seen it knock out ongoing cards. But even having this in play for a couple of rounds, any non-hero target is played, you may draw a card. So oh. every time the limbs were coming into play, yeah. I could have been digging for my tools and built up his board better. That would have been good. But this guy, I had his board built up. He had like 10 guns, it felt like, and all this crazy stuff. It didn't get that hard. But uh, that's why I want to play this guy, because I love the building up the board. It reminds me of the Iron Man stuff from Marvel Champions. And Wraith does it too, building up her little weapons and bonuses too. So if you noticed when we're playing, until you just discard... That was ongoing. Yeah, oh, Mel, Mel never really played more than like one or two cards in play on her side of the board, if you notice, but mine kept mm -hmm. like going out into multiple rows. You can count, kind of tell if you've watched me play Marvel Champions, these are kind of heroes I like to play. Um, and this is like what I what I enjoy yeah. as well. So it works really well. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we won. Now let's, let's, was... let's talk about the game after literally today being the first day we've ever played this game. Yep. Uh, this is our third game we've played all today. We just learned the game this morning, basically. Um, so keep that in mind. Please understand that. We're still new to it. We haven't played everything in the box. We've only played with, I think we've seen like six different heroes on the board. Out of 12 in the box, we've seen only two villains. Out of six it was in the box. We've seen two environments out of six that are in the box. Barely scratched the surface from mixing all the combos and changing how the game feels and cranking up the difficulty. We've never played advanced mode. We've never played with events or critical events. We've not played with the campaign. Uh, and we not play with the alternate heroes, uh, which you can do also to spice it up. You play with the same deck, but you have a different hero ability, um, is how I understand how that works. 
but it's cool. The game is cool. I see why it was popular when it came out in 2011, why it continued to be popular, why expansions were released um, over and over again, and why they did a definitive edition, because this game is fun. I, I see that for sure. A couple things going for it that I like. You guys know, the one thing in Marvel Champions, in all the collectible card, or collectible card games, living card games, expandable card games, all these card games, I'm not a deck builder. I don't like building from scratch. I love playing games. That's why Keyforge is probably like my favorite game, it feels like, of all time. I love that game so much because I can walk into a store, walk into a tournament, and just literally buy a pack of cards for 10 bucks, and I'm in the tournament with possibly a winning deck if I can pilot it and figure it out right. Uh, and then obviously draft and sealed and stuff in those games is amazing, like a uh, sealed format or whatever. Loved it. But I'm not a deck builder. I can build decks. I can spend the time. I can build decks. I do like building decks. The, when I have built decks in the past, it is fun. It's just very time consuming. And I prefer playing these games way more than I prefer building decks. So when you guys see me play Marvel Champions, when you see me play Arkham Horror, all that stuff, other people are building our decks for us, or I'm looking on the internet, finding people who post decks, trying to understand decks and build decks, because I want to get to the gameplay as fast as possible. And yes, I could solve that by just playing with the pre-constructed decks in Marvel Champions and those, and play with the starter heroes in like Arkham, for example, the starter investigators, or um, I could just build some decks and keep them kind of pre-constructed pre -constructed myself yeah. and just leave them in a box and play any of those LCGs. But part of the fun of those LCGs is tweaking the decks to try to solve the scenario. In this game, the decks are just pre-built. And that is a good thing to me. Yeah, it may not be as interesting because you can't really, like, I can't make Wraith work different and change her aspect or make her handle this hero better. But again, maybe that's the reason it's not true soloable because they chose to keep the decks locked how they are. So when a hero has a weakness, they just always have that weakness. You can't change out an aspect you can't tweak five cards you can't put in silver bullet cards you need those other heroes at the table to balance it out cover the weaknesses to deal damage when a hero at the table is not dealing damage to heal when you don't have a hero to heal to prevent damage to draw cards because not each hero doesn't have all the answers so playing true solo with some of these heroes i can see how maybe they just didn't want to figure that out and they didn't want to do deck building or any changing of the deck that's why I say this is a great little board gamer card game kind of version of Marvel Champions because you literally, if you don't care for deck building and you love a game like Keyforge because there is no deck building, and I know there's people that appreciate that who just love playing and solving what is there and they don't want to spend time building decks to get to the table or building decks for their friends that they hope their friends will like and all that stuff. This, you just read your friend the little gameplay in here. And this is great. To, for me, it's great. This may turn people off, but I just want to say that I love that about the game. I can just read a little gameplay section about the hero or whatever, right? Um, I can go right to here. And I can be like, oh, oh, hey, Kyle, this is how Tempest works. Tempest can control the weather, but keeping many weather cards in play can be challenging. You make you do this, whatever, whatever. You know, does that sound cool to you? If so, boom, here's Tempest deck. You get to play it. And this is kind of how it works, and we'll go through it and kind of figure out how, how it goes, right? Um, Without having to look through all the cards to see how it plays. But I know, I know there's the opposite, right? Some people are like, well, hate this game because you can't change the deck. They'll get bored of it faster and they'll move on, right? So you got to understand what you're getting into here. So I, I compare it to Marvel Champions, obviously, because it's a superhero theme. It's cooperative. I get the same feeling. I literally feel like I'm playing Marvel Champions when we're playing, because it's literally going around the table, kind of, except for that you have the choice of, you know, uh, or the, who goes first flips, so it keeps changing. But you're still working with the teammates at the table. Mm -hmm. Things are still firing off, not on your turn. The villain gets a turn. There's, like, minions that come in play. We're punching different things, deciding on what are the threats, doing prioritized puzzle solving, being efficient with your deck, building up a board. You have the ramp of dealing, like, no damage to all of a sudden, like, late game dealing tons of damage. You have multiple stages to the villain. You have the whole, these are basically your, your um, schemes that you have to deal with. I like this environment deck. It's interesting the way sometimes it helps, sometimes it hurts. Mm -hmm. I like that. I'm sure there's ones that only hurt. Um, <laughs> this is obviously the easier one, I think. Um, but yeah, so far I like what I see. I understand why this game has a following. I understand why it's still around today, just like Marvel Legendary is, you know, just like all, all these other card games that seem to last, these cooperative card games. Because uh, it is just fun. It's very straightforward, but it is fiddly. It is fiddly. There's some weird stuff, weird ruling things. The design is not solid. It feels kind of dated a little bit. 
Um, the rule book is, I mean, it makes the game seem simple and straightforward, but then when you try to look up a rule in the rule book, it's a very poorly formatted, very poorly. Like, in here... It looks like it. You read through it from front to back, and you're like, I can I can stream, I can play this game no problem without yeah. ever making this mistake. It's so simple. But then you start playing, and then your first card you draw, you're like, what does that do? For, yeah, first question you and have. Then, and then you look for the keyword that's not on the back here. So then you're, you go to the keyword section, you're trying to find it. But that keyword's not in here. And then you start reading again, you're like, but I swear I read about that in here. And then you start looking, and then you find they bury things within other keywords, and those are the only places the rules are in. You know, um, some of the sections, they don't really go into too much detail. So it's like, they, they it's, it, it, the rule book makes it seem simpler than it is, I feel. And it doesn't really answer your questions. And it's not like there's a uh, rules reference to kind of fill in the lack of this. Um, so this could have, this could have been better if there was a learn to play rules reference kind of format. I know it's like they would just be kind of doing what FFG does, but... A lot of companies are going that route now with games like this, where you have to learn to play, get you into the game, get you the starter set, uh, starter scenario, play that, learn the game. And if anything comes up, go to a rules reference. But the referencing of this book, I mean, it's not a lot of pages you have to go through, but... It's big text, so you can kind of just skim, I guess. Yeah, That's what we were doing. Yeah, but... it's just like very laid out weird, and things are hidden within sections you don't expect. So there's like no alphabetical way to look up anything. There's no rhyme or reason why things are in whatever order. So you're just like trying to figure out something a villain's doing. And you're like, uh, let me go read about villains. Well, there is no reading about villains. There's like, you got the villain here, but then it's like, what am I, what do I want to know about the villain? Is it about the villain's damage? Is that in here? No, nope, maybe it's not in this spot. Maybe it's, uh, no, it's not here. Oh, maybe it's in here. Uh, oh, maybe it's in a keyword. Maybe it's under the like it's it's like it doesn't. It's not obvious where things are. I feel. Um, so for a definitive edition, a rule book that was put in a box of a game that's been around for twelve years uh, or ten years or whatever it's been. Yeah, no, it's been in 10, 2022. It came out in 2020, 2011. Let's say ten years before they decide to reboot it. You think they would have taken all the feedback from the fans, all the FAQ questions, and come up with a little more than this? They have just this FAQ that kind of answers some things, but I went through here. I had multiple questions today that came up while we were playing, and I literally stopped. Mel went and did something. I read through every piece of text again to see if I could find an answer. Sometimes I would find it in the weirdest spot. Sometimes I wouldn't find it at all. So for a game that's like, they should have learned enough by now to make a more solid rulebook to really like from not just their own game in their own community, but from other games they designed, from other games that are released in the industry, from other games designed by other publishers and stuff, like, feel free to, like, you know, there's more out there than just your little world of whatever you think your game's supposed to work like. But this just doesn't seem like respecting the players and, and new players to the game. It seems like they just kind of quickly wanted to put a bunch of stuff in a best of box. And, uh, yeah, not really. I, didn't, I haven't looked at the old rule book. This maybe is better, but this is like, I feel like I'm reading a rule book from 2011. And this product was released like this year. So I feel like they didn't do as much definitive additions than they should have. Um, so yeah, I, I, that, that was very much lacking. But again, if you're playing this co-op on your table, there's no tournaments involved. If you don't get stressed out about the fiddliness and stuff, just make rules on the fly. Play it how you want. Look up quickly, but don't spend too much time in the rule book. I'm sure if I play some more difficult villains and some more crazier complex heroes, I'm sure I'll have even more rules questions that will come up. And I don't, I'm not confident I'll find them in here. And I don't really want to look up rules a lot online for another game. So again, like when you're into a game like Marvel Champions or an LCG, and you get into that lifestyle game, you get used to the, um, the quirks of it. You check out the FAQ, you pay attention when the rule book is updated. You kind of just get to the use of the rules and it's all about the playing. And a new card comes out and it's like sprinkling new rules on you, right? And you kind of grow and live in that world. Then when you go to play a similar game, it's like, now you got to learn a whole other language, right? So it's like, this is why I compare the games, because personally, in my collection, I have no need for this game. Because again, I already play Marvel Champions. I can play it true solo, two player, three player, four player. I can play with heroes I know, backgrounds I already know from when I was a kid and stuff. I can watch movies of them, all that kind of thing. I do appreciate what they made here. Amazing background, amazing story stuff. Some of the lore stuff I read is really cool. I love the comic art from all the different eras. It makes you feel like you're playing a game that some of the art you can tell is from like 60s comics. Mm -hmm. 
Same reason I like Cuphead and um, that Townsfolk Tussle and stuff. They're using like old art that's just been like forgotten and they're still using those art styles today. I think it's very classy, very cool what they've done here with that. Same idea. The game is fun. The game is fun. And if you're looking for a box full of variety to play a superhero -y kind of game, you know, and you don't want to get into a living card game like Marvel Champions where you'll just keep buying and buying and buying and by the time the game dies, you've realized you spent like $3,000 on cards over the years and maybe you haven't played $3,000 worth of gameplay. Could it be the opposite. Maybe you've played pennies worth of gameplay because you've played so much, right? But for this, the value of just the box, and I want to check what the current price is of this so I can uh, be more educated on what I'm saying here. Because uh, I forget. Again, we ordered it in January on order, like I'm telling you, six months ago. I have no idea. Uh, let's check. Sentinels. Uh, hmm. It's only showing me the old one. Multi. Oh, there it is. Definitive edition with no box or image. Okay. So quickly, just going to check up on board game Oracle here. In Canada, $50 for this game. That's less than, I think... Marvel Champions core set. Is it? For this many heroes, this many environments, campaign mode, um, alternate heroes, alternate villain scenarios, uh, all that stuff. If we switch to the US, 40, 40 42, 43, 47, like fully in stock. Holy crap. No problem finding it in the US, it looks like. Canada it sold out a few places. But uh, now let's just check, for example, Again, I'm telling you, I feel like, I didn't even know the price for sure, but I already felt like this core set just gave you tons more. Uh, why did I not put champions after that? And I'm thinking I would find it in the first few. <laughs> like, how many Marvel, like, <laughs> game stuff there is? Game things? Uh, so this is the Marvel Champions core set. So US... It's about the same. Oh, okay. But again, you get more in this. About the same, and that one only kind of gets you started, right? It gets you only three heroes, like three scenarios, sorry, five heroes. And a couple encounter sets you can mix around, right? Mm -hmm. And some cards you can tweak the decks, though. So again, it, it's like apples to oranges, kind of, because one is you got to build your decks unless you just play with a pre-constructed, which you totally can, so it has that answered. So you don't have to deck build a Marvel Champions, but then you always need to be playing on standard mode or, like, easy mode or whatever. Um, but this game... Uh, your decks are just pre-built and they're never tweaked, right? So, yeah, there's that. So that might ruin it for some people that you can't, like, adjust your deck and pull cards out and put cards in that might answer it. And again, true solo. But this game does have, like, a load of stuff in this box for the price. Like, I was blown away when I was going through it. It has dividers and everything. Yeah, dividers, places to put the cards. This foam wasn't in here. Just know that's that's me. But, uh, yeah, it has, like, all, all the campaign stuff, scenarios, and different villains and environments and all the hero decks are all here. Okay, a lot to get you started. There's other expansions coming from this line too. So if you think this is it, it's not it. But I'm just trying to compare like as best I can apples to apples, this base game to the core set of Marvel Champions. Personally, gameplay wise though, Marvel Champions is better to me. If, I, if, you, if you tried to make them as even as possible, if you just took like three scenarios out of here and five heroes, let's say these five starter heroes we've been playing with or whatever, four a year, but we play with other ones. And you put those in a box and you told me, play this game, Rob, or play this game, no deck building involved, here's your two decks, play the game. The Marvel Champions one, the fact that it uh, has the multi-use cards, the puzzle of when I draw my hand, I now have to use my cards as resources to pay for things. I like in this game, there's like no resources, you're just limited, like this reminds me of Flesh and Blood with yeah. the whole... You're just limited to like your one action or like Epic the card game where you have the one gold, uh, the one from Wise Wizard Games where you can just like play the biggest, craziest effects, but they cost one gold. And the weakest effects all cost free. Play as much as you want. But like you're limited to one big effect a turn kind of, unless you can combo off or like in Flesh and Blood you can get ongoing and, and uh, or go again, sorry, and, and keep, keep going and comboing. Um, this kind of you can combo a little bit depending on your character. This feels like that where they've taken the resources and just made the, 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 the actions, action economy very strict. The Marvel Champions is like, you can build up to like big crazy stuff just like this, but I just love that puzzle of like, here's your hand, Rob. 
which cards are important to you because you can only afford to play certain ones. In this, you still have the hand puzzle, but it's like just that multi-use cards and the ripping through your deck in Marvel Champions is drawing up to like six cards, seven cards, five cards, whatever. And you're just going through your full deck really fast and seeing everything. It just feels like that game's buildup is just more exciting to me compared to what I've played with this. But that's why I'm trying to be very open with you. This is our third game of this game. We've only seen like a handful of heroes. I'm sure there's situations that do that. And I see some comments in the chat before about the old version of Sentinels was really slow to ramp up. Um, and this one, they've improved that. So that's good. But I just feel like most Marvel Champions, it's just like you're kind of into it quicker. And just the true solo nature of it, it just rocks it that I can play true solo and play my favorite Marvel heroes. It's just really hard. It's hard for me to even want to ever play this at, at two player or one player because we have to play three or four or five heroes or whatever. That kills it for me until we have three people at the table at least. That's the only time I'll probably play this game in the future unless you guys really want us to play it again. I do have fun playing this. It's okay playing two-handed. It's not that complicated. But it's just I don't prefer to play games like that when I don't have to because there's so many other options, right? So it only takes the smallest thing for me just to say, I'd rather play this, you know? And I'm trying to be honest with you guys and let you know where I'm coming from. But um, the game's awesome. It's awesome for what it is. It is awesome. It is cool. I see why you guys are recommending it. And I definitely see the relation here. Like, I mean, you can only design a co-op superhero game so many ways, right? So it's obviously, there's going to be so many that are kind of like similar and stuff. But it's really well done. Like what they came up with, I, I like it a lot. And the quality of the components, the cards, all, all, all great. Graphic design, the art, like it feels very comic booky. Mm -hmm. Great. And, and I saw some comments how the art of the first game wasn't that great. And I agree. That's literally what turned me off of the game the first time I saw it at Gen Con. I looked at it. It just, their big banners and everything and all the cards on the table. It just looked very amateur to me. And at the time, I was really having the FFG competitive card games and stuff. And all that stuff, they're using like really top tier artists and graphic designers and stuff. So it was like hard to compare, right? So I was just like, I love the premium feel of those games. Um, but that's just me being a snob. Um, but yeah, this is a great game they have here. This is a great game. I just, again, I wish they did put some true solo in it and put the effort to do that. And I wish they put the effort to make a better learn to play and a reference guide kind of rule book rather than this mishmash of kind of feels like an incomplete kind of rule book and kind of not a lot of thought put into it. Um, but other than that, it's cool. It's cool. I don't know. I want to experience more. I want to try more heroes and stuff. But I kind of need another player to play with us. That's the only problem. It's like I honestly debated, like, do I pack this up and bring this to Gen Con? And, like, if somebody will play with us in the evening, we can play more than... We can get, like, a five-player game going? Because I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that here. Like, I don't know if, how often we'll get enough players over to play three or four players that we won't want to play something else over this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if this is in my bag at Gen Con and I don't have Marvel Champions to grab or some other board game that's just better at, at you know, three players that I'd rather play... Yeah. Then I kind of force myself to play it. <laughs> I don't know, but it's wow. cool. Okay. Again, it's not probably for me, again, because I found Marvel Champions. If I found this game before Marvel Champions, it might have changed my life. But I didn't. So, uh, the elephant in the room, I have to mention it, and that's just where I'm at. So, yeah. But I can recommend this over Marvel Champions. If you haven't gotten into either, you need to take a look and, and weigh, the pro, weigh the pros and cons. Like, again, do you need true solo or two-player true two player i don't know how you call that but like each player only controlling one because trying to teach a game if i pulled you in and was like you are not really a gamer and you're mm -hmm. like you know you're not really you don't want to learn and i tell you like let's play this game together and we got you know i could give you one hero and i play two yeah yeah i can see yeah that's an issue for some but i mean yeah it'd still be weird especially yeah. when they recommend like if you got two people at the table play two heroes each but it's like that's kind of yeah, sucky. For first game as someone yeah. Like, yeah, like when you're learning, game. it's like you're just trying to learn your one deck and your hero how to play properly, right? Yeah. Now you're trying to keep two decks, uh, tracking two decks, and not everyone wants to do that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but anyways, I don't know. Did I miss anything? Um, I have some thoughts that are maybe, oh, yeah. maybe different than I do, yours. I do have, yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, sorry, <laughs> I just mean I want to get into um, the tokens. I like this token idea. It's just like a lot of tokens. I thought FFG was bad for putting tons of tokens in their game. I like the reminders though. They're I do, nice. yes. They're nice to glance around the table and you quickly see them. It's just, I'm bad at upkeeping tokens in general in games, so no fault in the game. I'd rather have them than not have them. Yeah, I, I agree. think that's great. Um, there was one other thing pre built decks I like. Tokens are fine. And there was something. Oh, I talked about the building heroes. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. 
That's all I got to say. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, I'll preface everything I'm going to say that I am not a comic book fan. I don't read comics. I never follow comics. So I don't really care about any of that. Art is cool. Sure. I don't care. Um, now, I maybe disagree slightly with you. I really enjoy this game, like a lot. And I may even possibly like it more than Marvel Champions. Anyone looking for a gamer to play with, a <laughs> wife or anything? I, I have no use for this one anymore. <laughs> just I'm kidding. not saying I won't ever play Marvel Champions. I really I'm just enjoy kidding. this. We played, even after the first game we played, I, I said that to him, I'm like, I really like this game, like a lot. Yeah, it's cool. I like the simplicity. Okay, yes, the rule book. We are playing with simpler heroes, though. Yeah, but We haven't gone so. into the high complexity the, stuff of the game. Even this one, she has some combos and things you still have to yeah, like, yeah. manage, which I yeah. liked, but... I lost my train of thought for one second. Anyways, I'll get back to it. But the rule book, yes, the rule book's a little bit, you know, all over the place, which is fine. Everything kind of was there that we wanted to say. But I think the game itself is, it's like simple, where it's, okay, this is your turn. You do this, then you do this, then you do this, and your turn is done. Very structured. Very structured, yep. very simple, very straightforward. It's like you said, it's the one action, which, again, reminded <laughs> us very much of Flesh and Blood. And you're even, like, we're playing four heroes. It still is fast, right? It's not like one person. Yeah, there's some combo maybe with, yeah, with some of the characters. We could get stuck yeah. on my turn for 10 minutes while I'm doing analysis paralysis. Yeah, and then I'm like, then I pick up my hand and go, yeah. shoot, what was I going to do again? Yeah. I forgot. Which this is, one is very is simple. Why I think Marvel Champions 2 is gets panned sometimes by people not wanting to play that at higher player counts because they just want to get to their damn turn. Down. So that's why solo and two player love playing Marvel Champions that way. So you can work together on your team and share action yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 you could. But... Yeah, it, it can lend itself to a little bit of analysis paralysis with, especially with larger hands. And or you start a turn, then you're like, oh, I need to take that back. I can't do yeah. that. I want to do this instead. you're trying to solve that huge puzzle exactly. on your turn. But this, it's like, quickly look at your hand. Do you have anything you're worth playing right now? Half your cards are limited, so you can't even play them anyway. Then it's like, do I do this one shot or this one shot? You play it. Yeah. Then boom. Fire off a power in, in, in turn. Sometimes you do two, more and more. And then, boom, end phase. It's like very simple. You just very scan simple, your cards really quick. Yeah. So, yeah, the rules might, might take a little bit to get yeah. the hang of it. But once you get the hang of it, the structure, Good and point. it just kind of flows, and I really enjoy that. It makes it makes it very simple. Again, like you said, the analysis process isn't there because, like, I, I maybe have a handful of cards, but I can only play one. Mm -hmm. So do I want to play something that's going to do something now? Do I want to play something that's going to set up for the future? What do I want to do? So I really like that. Um, uh, I... I'm excited to try. Well, I don't know if he's going to play them with me. I don't play solo either, so that's something, right? I yeah, don't. Yeah. I don't even think of this in a solo format where you have kind even, of compare. I, Mel's never played a solo board game in her life, no. right? Never. Yeah. Like, no. I Solitaire didn't. Maybe, I but. didn't really until like uh, I don't know, like 2019, probably around there. Like before yeah. that, I had tried it. I do want to play. There's a couple that I do want to play, like, like Final the Final Girl. Girl yeah, and, and those. I want you to play Final Girl. I do Girl. want to play because well, we can I'm, play Final Girl together and just sit here. I, I, I can play with you. I know we could do that because I I do want to play them and I watch Rob play them. And I'm like, ah, oh, that looks like a really fun game. I wish I could play with you, but uh, I could just play by myself. I, yeah, I just don't. So in my head, when I'm when I'm even thinking about this as a game, I don't even think about playing solo. So the three handed part doesn't even come into my head. But playing two heroes, we played two heroes all day today. It hasn't been a problem because there's a couple heroes, yes, that have a big board that's going on, but you kind of just work through your cards, like, can I do this, this, yeah, this, this? Yeah. It's not things that you have to really worry about managing. It's not, it's not too difficult like some of the other LCG games. So for this, it's manageable to play. Three might be hard because you're kind of managing three characters plus everything else, but managing two heroes for me hasn't been too bad. Mm -hmm. Again, maybe once we get into some of the more the complicated complex, heroes, yeah. it might be a little bit more challenging and maybe a little more um, upkeep, but yeah. And then again, you're right. The tokens can be a little bit fiddly of making sure you're removing them at the right time, but I do appreciate that they've given yeah. all the tokens for reminders. I do really like that. But again, um, my final thoughts on this is I really, really like this game, and I hope that you'll play it again uh, because I, I do yeah. want to try more of it. I want to try harder heroes. Again, we, I, need, or, we need to get our daughter to play yeah. it. I think she would like it too, and it's the three player. We're kind of forced to do three, so I think it would be fun. Like, I think she would like it. She lo used to love playing Marvel Champions. I remember playing Captain Marvel, like blowing her mind every time she built up one of those big hits and loved it. Like, we mm -hmm. have characters that do that in this game. I do think this is also maybe a. Uh, family friendly yeah. game right you can like we can bring this to our family nights where we have five people that yes, game yes and we or can play if, you have, if you're playing with like teenagers or you know preteens, they may enjoy this some of these heroes are a little simpler and you know versus marvel champions where it might it might be more challenging 
So the argument too is you say you like the game because it's like more straightforward, it's simple, you're going through the motions, it's like, you know, it, we're playing lighter heroes, yeah. so it might feel simpler. But then I'd argue that, um, again, this is why I say, full disclosure, like this is our third game ever, we literally just learned and played this game for the first time today, so we haven't played it enough to see if like you kind of get bored of the heroes like oh sure because yeah. again in marvel champions i play a hero and if i start to solve that deck or i kind of get bored of seeing the deck or the scenario you know I, I can tweak it up the scenario change out the encounter cards well just like i can change the environment but the hero i can literally swap the aspect out and that hero might feel completely different or switch up a bunch of the neutral cards and whatever mm -hmm. the hero still has your core cards but you can just spice up that hero, and every time new cards come out, you just spice up that hero again and keep changing it up. Um, so that might have better uh, longevity to it, right? But this game, like, you know, you'll you, I see because the, the decks are pre-built, it could, over time, you get kind of bored of it. Like, it happens. Like, I know too many bones, you play with the same gear lock over and over again, and kind of like, okay, I, I get it, and you got to change the scenario to make the gear lock maybe different, but... Now, I guess to con to be on the opposite side, I don't think we're going to play this that much that that would be boring to me, right? We're not going to play this 100%. Like, but I'm just all saying day, in every general. Weekend. But yes, if this is the only game that you own and you're playing over and over and over. I'm just saying yes. comparing both, if I were to own both and play both for like, you know, one for a year and the other one for a year, mm -hmm. like, you know, like yeah. and collect stuff for both of them, you might. Agreed. You know, the, the, the fun in this is coming playing new villains and new combos of heroes at the table and stuff. Yeah. But that same thing applies to Marvel Champions, except for you can go even one step further and tweak the hero. Like, right. really change up your hero. Is your hero going to be the defender and healer? Are they going to be the attacker? Are they going to be the one handling all the scheming, you know? Like, you can literally make any hero take those roles or the leadership hero with all the controlling all the allies, like... Yep. And even go into multiple of those with some of the heroes or tweak the deck so you handle a few things. Um, so again, the deck customizability is just missing from this game. And that might be the deal breaker for some people. So just so guess, the, hey, but the other way around. So Yeah, but you might be weighing the deck customization versus the no the pre built decks. Yeah. Right? And just but being that, able to pick up and play. But I did I did go off track because also when you're saying the game's just simple, straightforward, it's fun that way. Yeah. But some people might find it boring faster because sure. it's simpler. Yeah. That's what I was trying to get at. So in the long term, a simpler game sometimes can bore some people faster and stay on the shelf or get back on the shelf to collect dust faster than a game that's like more interesting and, in and complex a little bit, right? Yeah, and I think maybe that's simpler all. isn't the right word. No, I know. It's like straightforward maybe or something. Straightforward would be the word, right? Where it's yeah. your turn. Do I have any start phase actions? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, play one card. Can I play it? Does it let me play another card? Does it let me do something, you know? So straightforward versus yep. simpler because there, again, like you said, some of these where there's combos involved, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to play. So simpler yep. is not the right word. You're right. And there are like some people when they hear me say something, I'm not saying it in a negative way. I'm just letting you guys know, like if you are looking for a more straightforward game, that's you don't have to dive too deep into and just pull out a deck and start playing. Mm -hmm. It's like this can have that for you. Same thing in the other game too, but. The other game's rabbit hole, I feel, is a lot deeper you can get lost in. So that's all. And, and a little more complexity, some people don't like that. Some people like games that are just, get them to the table quick, they don't burn your brain as much, and have a fun time and put it away. Like, yeah, maybe not everybody has a ton so of time. Yeah. Yep. Which I, I can see that as the appeal of this, for sure. Mm -hmm. Like, I can see that. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. So I, I would... Excuse me, I would love to play multiplayer, more players, yeah. different villains, all of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. and, and I want to see what the chat's saying. Uh, Sercato's saying this game is just better uh, in multiplayer. More pick up and play. Uh, Bob says, no doubt Marvel Champions is a more complex game, but that is the beauty of Sentinels is simplicity. Yeah, yeah. which I and agree I'm not, with. I'm I not like. saying either one is bad. I'm just saying like I'm trying to help people out with information. So if you're deciding between these two, like these are the things I think of one versus the other. So like to some people, what I say about one game might seem like a bad thing. And a thing I say about the other one might seem like a good thing, but I'm just trying to be like neutral about that part. But you guys already know I'd rather just play Marvel Champions at this point. That's just, I would pick that game any day of the week unless I didn't feel like deck building. I didn't have decks ready and some people wanted to punch some villains in the face with some superheroes. I could just pull this out just kind of the same way you can pull out Street Masters and grab a few decks, hand them out, and then grab a scenario, an environment, a villain, whatever. Boom, boom, boom. Let's set it up and let's play. 
Like, that is cool. That is cool. Yes, you can do that for Marvel Champions, but you have to do like two hours of work, figure, work. figuring out decks to build and the scenarios you want to pick and put in your box and bring with you and all that mm -hmm. stuff. It can be done, but it's, there's more work to it. Yeah. So that is a value to me. Like, I, I love that aspect of it. And again, we, like Mel said, we won't probably play this that much. So when we do play it, it still kind of feels fresh and, right. and, yeah. and fun. And like when we play with different people at the table and different combos of heroes, it'll always be new to us. We're not going to play this out where we play the crap out of it for like a month and then we're like, oh my God, we're, we're so bored. bored of it. Yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. So I'm glad this is in my collection, but it has a totally different purpose than Marvel Champions for sure. Because he's now only going to play it when I say let's play it. <laughs> Yeah, let's see. Uh, you have to be a little careful with the villain versus hero combos, as some villains will shut down, uh, will shut certain heroes down completely, says Bob. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Um, and Mel is going to enjoy playing as Fnatic, I oh. think. Oh, yeah, I saw that twice. I debated playing Fnatic when I was reading about them. I don't even think I got that far. I just started reading through some of them and then stopped at this Yeah, one. I was reading through the... This the one is my favorite so far. Tachyon? I love her. Uh, let's see, what else are you guys saying? <laughs> Mike says, once you get 100 plus hours in, three-handed isn't an issue. But Mike, are you not playing on digital, you were saying? So digital obviously makes that way easier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Digital, obviously you played this game digitally, yeah, that whole true solo stuff, I don't, I don't think it's as bad at all. Obviously the upkeep and the table presence isn't as bad either. <laughs> Mike says, thanks for trying this, Robin Mel. I'm glad you tried it at least. I absolutely adore this game. I can see why. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. But again, I'm like, yeah. Just considering the base game, I think Sentinels is more bang for your buck. We, yeah, Matthew, 100% yep. agree. That's what I was getting at right earlier in the, in, in the video when I showed the box and what came in it. I was kind of blown away by how much was in it uh, after opening so many LCGs over the years. And this is like their starter set. I was like, okay, you could kind of just keep this and not buy anything and you're kind of fine. You know, and you can keep playing it. With an LCG's core set, you kind of can play it a bunch, but I feel like you'll get bored of it way faster and you kind of need to add more to it to make it like replayable like this. And, but those are designed to kind of get you into buying the packs over and over again, usually. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this feels more like a complete game and less like a trial pack, you know, to get you started. Right. Mm -hmm. Obviously the new core sets from FFG have gotten better, but they still, you know, you, you those decks that are pre-built don't feel like as cool and powerful as they could be and stuff. So, they're all just to, to whet your appetite to get into deck building and buying more cards, right? Oh, Faith Rin, good evening, guys and gals. Uh, Sentinels of the Multiverse is my single favorite card-based co-op game. In fact, my husband and I just played it last night. Awesome. That's cool. That's awesome. What's your second favorite card-based co-op game? <laughs> but see, there's a difference between card-based and LCG. No, those are card-based co-op games. Yeah, but they're like a different... Nope, they're card-based co-op games. <laughs> yeah, like, okay. Like, when I think of card-based co-op games, I think of the this, I think of... Um, Aeon's like End. Aeon's End, like Deck Builders, you work of, together. Yeah. I, th I think of um, Heroes of Tyrannoth, or like the Warhammer Quest stuff. Mm -hmm. I think of, like, Pathfinder. I think of uh, Pathfinder, the adventure card game. Mm -hmm. I think of, like, those. like, those, like, legendary... Games. Yeah, like, like deck builders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Legendary is like kind of like the Aeon's End idea, like a cooperative deck builder against like yeah. the villain kind of thing. Um Yeah, I could see that. That's cool. Circato says, uh, is really good. I got my wife, brother, and my mother to play this with uh one time and they had a blast. And my wife is not that much of a gamer. That's awesome. Well, she's now officially a gamer, and she doesn't know it if she's playing this game. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, Brian says, will Rob make more people furious? <laughs> will Mel have to play Sentinel solo? <laughs> <laughs> will we see a Marvel Heroes versus Sentinels? <laughs> oh, no. oh. If I'm going to play a solo game, let me tell you, I'm not starting with a three-handed solo game. <laughs> For my first ever. Yeah. 
Uh, oh. Second favorite is Aeon's End. Okay, nice, nice. Nice. All right, you can hang out on the channel all day. You're welcome here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, that's awesome. Yeah, see, and they're with uh, LCGs are a different genre. Oh. Yeah, see, that's what I think of. Like, I think of LCGs as one thing. Where Arkham reigns supreme. Ah, okay. I, I agree. <laughs> How can you not think that Arkham Horror, the living card game, is a cooperative card based? It is. Co op based card game. The card based, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it is, it is. Yeah, card based co op game. It's all cards. I don't know. <laughs> no, I agree. What but it's makes like, it not a, one It's of like a subcategory. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. Oh. Because it's a lifestyle game. Oh, okay. So the lifestyle, it's, they, those are lifestyle co op card based games. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but with all the expansions that came out with this game over 10 years, you didn't think this was a lifestyle game? I don't know. And Do they, they, they already have like a uh, Kickstarter expansion, and I don't know if they've done more. For even the second edition. This may be a question that you don't know, but when they do when they do expansions for this game, do they just do one villain like they do with Marvel Champions, or do they do like a couple villains and maybe a hero? You don't Let's have to find look it up. It's okay. No, we got time. But I was just curious, like I've because other than this, I haven't looked into it. So this is the original version. Uh, if we go to expansions, uh, they, oh, fan expansions. Like, I didn't know if they do a similar style where they just do one hero. I don't know. Holy crap. Uh, I don't know. Someone in the chat will probably answer. Their upcoming expansion is called Rock City Renegades. If that's all for yeah, but before, though, how was it released before over the last 10 years before they rebooted it? Yeah, like, was it similar? Is it Some are big box expansions that have a few heroes, villains, and environments. Oh, okay. Big, oh, okay, both had the same. That's awesome. You guys said it at the same time. Okay. And single heroes were expansions too. Oh, okay. Okay, neat. So neat. kind of okay. like Marvel Champions with the hero packs versus the campaign boxes where you get a little bit of more stuff. That's cool. Okay. That's cool. Some are single hero, villain, or environment. Oh, okay. Okay, that's cool. Oh, cool. Well, if you enjoyed us playing this game on the channel and you want to see more, uh, it's not a never thing. I'm just telling you, like, I know somebody's going to ask later about this game versus Marvel. I will definitely play this game again, whether it's on the channel or not. That's up to you guys. More people watch this. Yep. More people hit the like button. Yep. If people are interested, yeah, we'll play it again. Of course. Um, that's just like with any game we play on the channel. Assuming there's not other games that are more priorities at the time, which always happens, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, one playthrough. I just want to try the game out, make sure we're playing it okay, see what the chat was saying, see if people are enjoying it, see if we're enjoying it. We're still in the discovery phase of the game. I still want to play it with other people that Agreed. I know will play this game with us, and we can definitely get a five-player game going of this, I think, mm -hmm. um, at some of our uh, family's game nights or whatever, uh, where they would play something of this level, and even the younger, uh, like our daughter will play, could play this, no problem. Um, but yeah, we could play it on, on the stream again. But again, I would probably only play it again if we got a third player to play with us. Um, so I'm working on that. I would also be curious if three player is a little more challenging, right? Yeah. Uh, well, it should scale, but yeah, some, I don't know. It should scale. Because it is scaling a little bit in how much damage the boss is maybe doing, but... You have one less full character doing abilities, which could be huge, right? In some cases. True. Um, infamous. We have played Final Girl on the channel. I played it a bunch solo. Oh yeah, Rob played a ton. Yeah, and I will play more. Uh, we have more on the way coming to us. Even more first wave stuff when that gets reprinted. Uh, I have a pre-order in with my local game store to get some more Final Girl stuff to play. That hopefully I'll play it around October time if it's out by then. Hopefully. If not, I'll just play what I have, because I definitely, that's a horror theme game I would love to play around Halloween time uh, to get in the mood. Um, but we do have, uh, thanks to Kanji, uh, gifting us a like basic pledge or whatever to the second wave of Final Girl stuff. So there's like, Final Girl has a future on the channel. Many more hours of that will be played. But yeah, maybe then we can convince Mel to play some solo. I can try. Now that I've been doing some, yeah. some paint streams. 
Getting a little more comfortable. Ultra Violetta says, Rob, solo this game, please. I don't think I will. I don't really want to. I don't want to. Yeah, if... if like, uh, He's not going to have fun with that. I, so then it's not going to be fun for anyone. So, so I could solo this game, and I probably would rather solo it not on a stream, because on the stream, I'm also like to read the chat and interact and have fun. And if... I don't mind getting thinky and controlling multiple characters if it's that's all I have to do. If I'm on a quiet room, you know, on the table upstairs, I'm just playing this game going hand by hand and I have no time worries and I'm nobody bother me and I'm just playing. Yeah, that'd be fun, no problem. But on stream, it's just like it's just too much and I'll mess up and I'll get frustrated that I'm messing up things and missing triggers and stuff. I already have that playing true solo in Marvel Champions. It sometimes gets overwhelming with like a new hero or a new villain and I haven't played in a while. I start to trip up, right? So, um, especially if I'm tired, you know, and uh, so I don't want to do that with this game where it's not as bad, but it's still playing one Marvel Champions hero is definitely way less complex than playing three heroes in this game and the villain and the environment card. Keep it track of all that stuff. Um, but it can get pretty out of control in that game too. So I'd just rather play that game if I was going to play a superhero game, want to punch a villain in the face, want to build up and do big, strong damage. Um, Marvel Champions is my game for that true solo for sure. Um, and that was just, it fits that role so perfect. I, I don't know, like why why bother? But yeah, we want to play this multiplayer. I'd love to kick this three player at a table with four player, five player. I would also be intrigued to try the campaign just to be able to say we've done it to, yep. to compare it to other yep, things. Yep, yep. But yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's not bad. Like I'm just saying, this is just me personally. I, I'm not recommending like stay away from this game. It doesn't have true solo, but like it's just crazy that it doesn't. But some people said, and I think um, I think it was one Daniel had said. If this had true solo, he would have already bought it. Yeah, I know. That's so what I'm saying. So it like, will throw th people but it, off. But that would have taken them more time to develop that into the game and everything. They probably just like wait it versus like, you know, maybe they're already working on a game that's like this that is true solo. That they're like, yeah, let's not worry about adding it to Sentinels. It, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. We're just, it's like, they're kind of just repackaging, like FFG's repackaging Lord of the Rings, right? They're not really messing with the formula. They're just like, let's repackage it for a new audience. Yeah. But, you know, I just wish they, for their definitive edition, they would have like, added a bit more to it would have been cool that's all just just wish but like i mean yeah. there's other games i don't need it to have that but again that will definitely like some people will not buy it because of that but then the other way around some people will buy it because it doesn't have it because they don't care like it's fine uh darren unmatched darren's mentioning speaking of pre-built decks have you tried unmatched or considered it yes we've considered it Unmatched. Unmatched is the one that keeps getting compared to before to the Funkoverse games. And we just got like the Funkoverse games to start playing those. And people said they're so similar. So like, and, and those like were kind of a little simple. They were fun to play with like our daughter and stuff, but they weren't like keeping us engaged yeah, as much. Yeah, we wouldn't be playing them just like on the weekends. Yeah, they were definitely <laughs> like a little too casual for us to play. Like, but they're fun. They're, they're great. Fun, they're yeah. solid. Um, and Unmatched was always described to us as a very chill, fun, light, casual, like, little ex versus experience. Uh, so we are just like, eh. But, I see that the game did not fizzle and die and disappear, and it keeps getting expansions, it keeps getting talked about. Every damn Gen Con, there's new stuff coming out people are running for and excited for. So, like, I don't know, it's on my list this year to kind of maybe check out there and, and go talk to the publisher and kind of see, like, what like i want to try something can i demo something at your booth to just try this game out like i i don't know where to even start or anything like that i have no idea too much about the game at all other than it just keeps on trucking and that is that has been always in the back of my head is like well i gotta try this one day so i do darren yes i do want to try unmatched i do want to try it at least to say i've tried it but i'm not like hunting it down and really like you know hungry for it or anything but to be honest just because i don't know enough about it but uh, yeah, I'll try Unmatched on the channel at some point. Uh, definitely. I, I don't see why I wouldn't, but uh, I just have to pick it up or something, buy a set, or I don't, I don't know. I'll look into it. And I think Gen Con, if we go, will be the place. I'll try this year to check it out. Um, if we have time, of course. Uh, so Faithrin says, Unmatched is very beer and pretzels. That's the perfect way to explain it to me, yes. Mm -hmm. And it's great. Sometimes I don't want a Gloomhaven. That's You're fair. comparing that. Yeah, yeah. Gloomhaven no, is like, like completely the other end yeah, of the scale. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to kick back and slap people around as Bloody Mary versus Sherlock Holmes <laughs> versus Medusa. Okay. I, I want to get the Jurassic Park dinosaurs going in there. Whatever the Jurassic Park stuff was had me interested. Mm -hmm. There's also some Marvel stuff like Daredevil and, and stuff for that one. 
um, which would be cool to try. And you're right. There is a place for beer and pretzel kind of games. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, for sure. We need to have them. But what right? I've learned with the beer and pretzel stuff is when we get it now and play beer and pretzel stuff, it's like, if it's just me and Mel, we're kind of like, we're playing it and we're like, that was fun. Okay, okay, cool. I get it. But it's just like not deep and intriguing and like satisfying enough sometimes. And I don't know if it's that case, we'd rather just go watch a TV show or go read the rules or learn a different game and kind yeah. of start building up to another game to play. Or we have other beer and pretzel type games that we would play. Yeah. Daniel, I have pretzels. <laughs> but, uh, doesn't mean we don't have a place for it though. Like yeah. usually those kind of games I would buy to play with my daughter or to bring over to like non-gamer family functions. Or more, yeah, or more casual gamers. More casual gamers. Yeah, yeah. And pull them into the hobby with those kind of games. Yeah. yeah. But when it, with Mel and I, it's like, okay, like, I think our best, our best game that we played, like, competitively like that, that we played the most, and I found us even playing, like, when we didn't need to and we're having fun, was Keyforge. Oh, yeah. I think that was the game where you were actually, like, were, like, happy to play, like, any time and just, like, grab a deck and figure it out and have fun. And we we're competing against each other and it was intriguing enough and, and it was quick. It wasn't too complex and yeah, it was fast, but not simple. Mm -hmm. It was definitely like had to just enough meat and strategy and the tactics are there, uh, fun decisions. Yeah, that game. Oh man, that game was like perfect for just you and I playing and friends of ours playing and like the pre-built decks were awesome. Tournament scene was wicked. I can't wait for that game to come back. But yeah. Uh, Mike says Dice Throne. That's another one that's on my list that yeah, was mentioned. That recommended one recommended quite a bit. That one's been recommended to us for like the last like two years, three years or something like that. And now I know they're coming out with like Marvel Dice Throne and stuff, which they're talking about at Gen Con this year, demoing it or something. Um, so I'm going to go try to check that out too if we go there. So uh, that is on my list, actually, Mike. We're going to go through the list later this week in a stream, going through what games could be at Gen Con for demo and sale. And we're going to talk about them and kind of look through them. So if you guys are there... We're going to see what you guys are thinking is interested, what we might like, and kind of make a list of maybe things to grab or demo for the channel and stuff over there. Um, but we need your input too on that. So we'll sit on a live stream and kind of gauge interest. Um, and then in the comments, I mean, we'll do some polls and things and kind of figure things out and kind of figure out what's cool there. And even if we can't go, we'll try to like put those games on our list for when they come out later in the year and, and buy them, pre-order them, uh, email the publishers, whatever we need to do. Um, but always around Gen Con and around Essen, they're always releasing new games and demoing new games and for upcoming stuff. So it's a good time to kind of like stop, look at what's coming out in the industry. And even some of the games that are older, if they got new expansion things, like I'm interested in them still. If they still have like, um, you know, if, they're, if they have staying power, that says something to me. That means like maybe I need to go back and check that one out that I, I raced past or didn't have the time to play or pick some other game. It doesn't stop me from going back. Like, we just played Star Wars Imperial Assault on the channel for the first time ever. And mm -hmm. that game came out in 2014. Still was great. It still had fun. But, like, we, we have no problem going back and playing older stuff. So, yeah. We, I definitely want to check out uh, Dice Throne still. Uh, it's on my list to check out somehow. If, if it's just a demo at the convention and I have fun and then I pick up a, a pack or I go buy it later from my local game store. Um, but I just need to try it. I'm not trying to just blindly buy games as much. Um, and maybe I can demo some, too. So yeah, but I do appreciate the input for sure. Uh, Edward does say Star Realms is the beer and pretzel game for him. Star Realms is freaking amazing. Star Realms actually is probably more of I prefer a beer. Hero Realms now though, but both they're both are, awesome. Both are so good. Yeah, yeah. So very, very good. Yeah, that's yep. probably a better beer and pretzel, right? Because Keyforge still has some thinky beer. Uh, well, I wasn't saying Keyforge was a beer and pretzel. I was saying Keyforge was our competitive oh, game. Competitive game, yeah. That we would choose to play and not be forced to play like because we're all oh, let's play it for a stream let's yeah. learn it or it's new let's try to play it like keyforge like we played and then we played again then we played again then you're asking me when's the next night to play at our local game store and then you and i would go there oh we would practice play. beforehand so then we were ready to play and, there. and then we'd also yeah. travel to other cities and yeah. play we go to gen con we're playing in tournaments like you didn't have to play in those tournaments no. but you would and then you'd play at home and stuff like you were just always wanting to play that game and and it was cool and uh but I can't say that about things like, um, like uh, what is the one, um, like Seven Wonders Duel or whatever that one is, or no, I think about that every now. You know, and those again, kind of games, like but... those kind of two. I'm just saying that for example. Yeah. But those like two-player games are like they're cool, 
they're fun to play a couple times, and then you're kind of like, okay, I get it. And then you throw it on the shelf and you look for another one. Yep. I don't know. But yeah, beer and pretzels, yeah. Hero yeah. Realms and Hero Star, Star Realms, Realms, 100%. Super replayable, super easy to get set up Very on the table fun. and play, and quick to clean up. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, agreed. Uh, Faithrin says, my go-to dueling style game is Ashes, Rise of the Phoenix Born. Never played never that played game. Ashes. Yeah. Never played Ashes, no. I know they rebooted it recently, like a second edition. I reached out to the publisher, I think, actually. Uh, I reached out to Plaid Hat and asked if they were interested. Um, you know, if it, I want to try out, if they had any press copies of the core set. But they never got back to me, so... Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so I just moved on. I was just like, ah, okay, whatever. I was just curious when it was coming out. I was, I was like, see some hype around it, but... When it first came out, I didn't think it was going to last. It just seemed like it came out at the wrong time. Too many other games like Star Wars um, Destinies and stuff that were kind of just more interesting to people. But I wanted to give it a try, but we just didn't, so. Um. Uh, Darren, we'll talk about the Keyforge stuff in another stream. I, I want to have a, a video or a stream where I just kind of go through the news on that. Uh, and I need to do that this week, I think. Um, yeah, because there's information related to like Gen Con and stuff that relates to that too. So I want to talk about that before I go. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> R.I.P. Netrunner, yes. <laughs> oh, King of Tokyo. That's a great beer that, and pretzel yeah. fighting game. Yeah, I agree. I remember having like tons of people around the table yeah. playing that. We like, played it at like, like Christmas time. Super casual stuff, yeah. gamers having a good time. Beer and pretzel punching each other. Oh, that was yeah. good times. Yeah. Cool. That was fun. Yeah, that was fun. I'm glad For we did the stream tonight. Stream. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This was supposed to be tomorrow. <laughs> we were thinking of doing it and I, or later in the week. And I was just like, you know what? We played it a couple times today. I'm having fun. Let's just play it on stream. And like, let's just get people's thoughts and play it and see how it works and try new heroes and stuff. Like, let's just have some fun. I think it wasn't that bad. And it just shows. It's like so straightforward. We were able to like... Read the rule book pretty much the first time this morning. Read a little bit last night, but like it wasn't sinking in. Read the rule book this morning. Play two games. We could have probably played like four games because it was so quick. Yeah, it was so quick. But we literally played two games, and then I, you know, made the scenes, the thumbnails, scheduled the stream, and then we played. And then we just chilled a little bit. Yeah, then we ate dinner, watched a show, and then we're like, let's stream tonight and play this game. So if that hopefully speaks volumes of what kind of game this is, and, and maybe it's for you. Um... Yeah, that was cool. But anyways, thank you all for watching. Enjoy the rest of your evening. We'll be back streaming more later this week. I'm going to be putting more streams popping up on the channel, maybe some last minute, depending on... We're waiting, we're for, waiting for something. Yeah, we're waiting for stuff to show up from some publishers that may arrive before we go and may come after. I don't know. We're waiting, um, which may change up our stream schedule this week. So we haven't scheduled some streams we, want, we know we want to do, but they might happen on different days, depending. So I might move some streams around or some streams might show up later. So keep an eye on the channel. Make sure you subscribe. The best way not to miss a stream uh, is if YouTube alerts are working uh, is subscribe, hit on the notification bell, turn on notifications, and you'll find the stuff in your subscription feed and you'll get notifications. Um, hit the like button, then YouTube will recommend you more videos like this to you and stuff like that. Also helps other people find the channel. Thank you to everyone for donating and supporting to the channel, to allowing us to buy games like this, uh, to play on the channel, more gambling on, on games we may not have bought otherwise, and, and thank you for the recommendations. If you'd like to donate to the channel, support us here. Links are in the video description. Uh, it means a lot and allows us to upgrade our cameras, our lighting, our audio equipment, computers, travel to conventions to you know meet publishers, get more games for you guys, get footage for you guys, all that kind of stuff, which hopefully we can start doing again soon and uh and uh adding games to the library to play on the channel so thank you all all for that and uh yeah enjoy the rest of your night and we'll see you in the next stream